fighting against the toughest, you're gonna become the toughest. If you're fighting in that environment, the toughest environment, you're gonna become that environment. So let's just get used to the toughest environment and let's go for it. Let's just make it happen. I'm the head professor here. I'm the head professor here. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Modern Day Warrior. We have a local Fresno legend and a Central California legend here, Cole Escovito. And uh, before we get started, I want to give a shout out to all my sponsors, uh, Rev Gear, Legends Podcasting, Dr. Fit Juan Bautista and Ruben Cedillo for making sure that I'm healthy all the time and I'm ready to let it rip. And I also want to give a shout out to Chin Check Clothing, Rayo Clothing, and I want to give a shout out to the air conditioning companies, Angels Air, Costless Air, San Cal Air, All Valley Air, also known as the AC Mafia, and... I want to give a shout out to Fight to and Pro Seth Daniels. Thank you for all you do for the Jiu Jitsu community. Everybody loves you. You know that. And uh, Red Bowie CBDs. So, Cole, we finally got you in the studio, man. How's it going, brother? How's life on this beautiful Friday today? It's like I was saying earlier. It's actually good. I'm on. I'm on vacation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's. I. I work for uh, Clovis Unified, and we're we're on. You know, we're off right now. So, um, this is kind of like the end of week one for vacation so it's been fun yeah you know uh get to sleep in which i don't know how much sleeping i've actually done i'm still up by like eight eight thirty right oh yeah it's, it's, hard. it's hard to sleep in anymore when you're on like a nine-month schedule so exactly yeah i know you're a hard worker you're always working and like what are you gonna do when you are on vacation it's yeah like- dude well actually you know what's funny is with the whole pandemic the way it went down and how schools just i remember back in like march of 2020 early march or like late february we started hearing about all the different districts that were closing and as soon as we heard that like la county pulled the trigger and then you know current it's like once we heard like once we knew la pulled the trigger so us as staff and so we kind of just got, as a collective we're like okay so we should prepare for something similar that we're not saying it's going to happen we're hoping it doesn't we want to keep our schools open and clovis unified actually did a good job about trying to not push the envelope so to speak but more like how do we find a common ground how do we find a happy medium a safe medium right we want kids in school you want kids in school but you want kids safe there was a it was a real touch and go what's best what's safe what's smartest kind of thing so we were all kind of sitting around going okay so it's going to happen so but when we came back it was different as far as school goes it was real quiet it was the zoom thing it was uh it was just a lot of quiet campus you can see the difference in the kids there is well granted we had a different type of student student body anyway but right. you could just see it in students of other staff members who yeah. would bring their kids in while they're doing zoom from their room their students their kids would do their zooms from their room you could see the difference between then and four months prior yeah. it was already a change you were like man they already yeah they already don't like this but and you know I don't know. I don't really give a shit too much about flack on things like that. But at the same time, it's like I can understand at the end of the day why certain steps might have been taken. Right. And they were – and that's where it gets gray. Were were certain steps taken in what certain what people felt were the best interests of the masses or was it what they felt was – there's so many different rabbit holes you can go down as far as what measures were taken and why because – when you start comparing things and this is like I said, I don't want to have your show get shut down because you got like fact checkers dot com blowing your shit up going everything that came out of Escovito's mouth was bullshit. But at the same time you have to consider I can understand the survivability rate and stuff like that. And I'm on I'm on both sides. Like I was like, yeah, it's got a pretty high one, but I also knew that when you narrow it down to smaller groups that are at higher age, immunocompromised, things like that, when you start looking at those groups, just those groups, the numbers start to drop as far as survivability, all, surviving healthy and things like that. So when you look at it as a whole, yes, but you got to remember that when you look at a picture as a whole, there's also little pictures that make up that whole picture that if, if, you, if you don't step back and look at the whole picture, you'll miss it. But sometimes stepping back and looking at the whole picture, you do miss – all the little pieces of the picture that make the whole picture. So a lot of people I feel were on one side of the fence out the gate just by looking at that big number because they were looking at the picture as a whole, as a population. And I get that because that's right. a real number. That was a real thing. Right. It wasn't that 
risky to say myself or you that are just middle aged, younger, healthy, things like that. And I get that. Right. But at the same time, there's a large amount of population that was at a certain risk that if, hey, if you caught it, you probably were going to have a rough time. And I get that. Right. Um, I don't know, man. I, there's also 8 billion fucking people on the planet, and yeah. our fucking planet's really not built for 8 billion people and growing. So right. at some point, you... you ah, dude, you're flag, your show's going to get so flagged. Okay, so at some point, you reach <laughs> what I feel is called the Roman apex. Okay? Right, right. Get your tinfoil hat, kids. <clears throat> Roller coaster's about to go. So it's the, tin, it's the apex, Roman apex. So society... I feel, and I've talked with this about this with several people. I just kind of keep it to myself because I don't want people looking at them going, you're fucking nuts because it sounds crazy. Right. Um, society can only reach a certain point of evolution or advancement or progress or whatever you want to call it. Right. It doesn't matter. Every society reaches a point to where they can no longer do it as a whole and they must crumble and rebuild from that point. Kind of like a video game save checkpoint. You right. hit a checkpoint in a game, you die, you come back to that checkpoint. Yeah. Stats, gear, whatever. You don't have to start all the way over. Right. So the apex thing is that the Roman apex is that you'll go back to that checkpoint. So we will rebuild Maybe not necessarily technologically as resource available, yep. but we're going to have resources available to us that will have survived whatever the next fall is, right. even if it's EMP, <clears throat> even if it's this, if it's that. Eventually, we will get the power back on. Eventually, we will find new ways to source for electricity and power sources. So it will happen. Technology will move forward, and you'll still be able to use an iPod. You'll still be able to use a computer screen. This shit's going to happen. We're not going fucking Flintstones when the shit hits the fan. It's just not. Yeah. It's there not. Will, there, when they <clears throat> say World War Three will be fought with nukes. World War Four will be fought with sticks and rocks. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But more like AR-15s and bows and arrows and shit and traps yeah. and, and more guerrilla warfare tactics. But the bottom line, <laughs> see? But the bottom line is I feel that we have reached that with 8 billion plus people on the planet. This isn't a thin to herd type mentality. This isn't a mentality where it's like, I don't give a fuck if people die. Because at the end of the day, I do care if people die. But at the end of the day... People got to die. We can't live forever. Our, right. our 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 infrastructure, our goddamn day to day living, the way we're structured. Look at the way the country shut down. You shut the machine down when the country came to a halt. Yeah. You shut the machine down. <clears throat> when you have die. a country that's run like a business, and you shut the fucking doors. Good fucking luck. What do you think's gonna happen? Yeah. Fucking employees are gonna riot. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody's crazy. getting a paycheck. So, um, but I understand. Again, there was a whole reason for it. But that whole mm, fourteen days to let me see your papers went yeah. real quick. So, but I understand. There's a good intent on everything. You just have to find out what the true intent was and what it's being masked. If it's being masked, and that's an if. I'm not saying it's right. if. There's always an agenda. There's right. always multiple agendas. That's what you have to accept in life. There's always multiple agendas. So, we've reached that point in society where we. Don't, I don't want people to die, but we need to have some kind of a crumble in order for us to start moving forward again. Because then we grow again. Now we've given ourselves room to grow. So I, I, people are going to listen to that and go, wow, Cole just wants to see people die and he wants chaos. And no, I don't want all that. What I want is I want us as a species to be able to progress. And at this point, we're literally choking ourselves. Right. right. Be it with pollution, overpopulation, um, finances, poverty, food resources, humanitarian resources, what the fuck ever you want. I saw people that were mad that were, what, what's our vaccine rate at right now? Like 60 plus percent, 62%. Right. Um, I think it's like 58 have right. the single, 68% have the double, haven't got the, but we're almost at the 70% mark, right? So, yeah. and there's people that don't want it. Yeah, okay? I don't. There's people that don't want it. I, I'm not going to get it. I'm not. At this, well, I, I, let me put it this way. At this point in my life, I don't feel that there's a need for me to get it. I've been knock on wood. I've been fortunate enough to be in a position at this time that I'm younger. I'm healthy. I eat healthy. I try to live a healthy life. I wash my hands. I shit like that. I try to live a healthy life because I came from the poker industry where you wash your hands because people don't wash their hands. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. so I'm fortunate. That doesn't right. mean I say I'm better than anyone or anything like that. I was in a fortunate position during this unfortunate time to where I was able to just take certain measures and I was able to avoid it. I wore the mask when I went out. I did everything I was asked to do. I didn't complain. I just did it because it was asking me. I understood its reasoning for it. Just like raw laws. Just like you're not allowed to drink and drive. Yeah. Like yeah. you can hurt someone. Exactly. So it's shit can, ha shit can happen. That's, that's the biggest thing. So, but we're at such a point to where we're almost reached that point uh, where the president said, hey, I want to reach 70% vaccination to where I'll feel comfortable and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I get it. But there's people that are bitching that we're taking vaccines that aren't even being used because we overstocked right. with the expectation that a higher population would want to get the vaccine right away. So we wanted to make sure we had it ready. Right. So I feel that 
we're giving it away to other countries that don't necessarily have quick access to it. Now, there's two reasons here. Listen to me. I know I've been on a tangent, but stick with me, Angel. Hear I got you, brother. Get it, get it. Two tangent here. One, we're either just trying to do something nice, get some humanitarian going, get some positive global numbers up for the current president right now because he does need those global numbers to go up in order to build relationships because he's the new guy in charge there. Yeah. So he needs to start building good, good rapport with other countries and stuff. And he's like, look, we wanted to reach 70%. We've got way more vaccine readiness available to us than we're going to reach 70% and then some. So we can start giving some away to those that maybe don't have immediate access, don't have quick access, could right. use it right fucking now yeah. because they're at <clears throat> major risk of a huge area of their country being fucking overrun with this virus. So, right. Or we got to find somebody to sell those to because they've already been bought and paid for and now it's just money sitting in shelves. I mean, there are two yeah. possibilities here. To to say that it's just one or the other, yes, but what I don't get is why are people mad that we're just even offering it to other countries? Why are you mad? Like, our, our people first. Yeah, well, our people don't fucking want it. Yeah. So we've got a bunch of leftover. Why not give some to the people that do? They care about it. They want to take it. These are the same people that see food being thrown away Absolutely. in restaurants and grocery stores and goes, you better fucking leave that there. I'm old school. Why, bro? Give it to that fucking dude on the street that's begging for food Always. who will take it Always. before he gets in the dump. Give it to him before he gets it out of the dumpster, I guess. Yeah. Would be the better sense. He's going to get it anyway. So we got overstock. Why let them have it? Yes, we have enough for our own country and our own people. But not all of our country and people want it. So we're going to have leftover that's not going to get utilized because of a certain percentage, at least minimum 30% right. to 25, 30% aren't going to want to do it. So what do we do with that? Just let it sit? No. It's... Let's give it away because it's the right thing to do or what I probably think is, no, we need to sell it to another country because we bought and paid for it already exactly. because those companies made the vaccine uh, not out of the goodness of their heart. Last time I checked, medicine yeah. costs money. Yeah. Getting sick in America costs money. So it's a money. money thing. Well, it's a money thing. Well, there were two so, things with it, I guess. Um, these countries have been asking for it because we are the leader. So all these countries have mm -hmm. been saying, hey, please help us out. <clears throat> yeah. so that's one thing is. And then just because they're in another country, they are still our neighbors. So, like, if we need to get vaccinated here, we need the rest of the world to get vaccinated. Within or, a close, close or, range. Or it's all bullshit because we're all going to travel in the first place. Oh, so, yeah. So we're, we're trying to help out the, the world, and we're not trying to just to be, in, you know, we're trying to be inclusive instead of exclusive. Yeah, and that makes sense. And like I said, there's... There's the humanitarian, logical approach of, look, I want to be safe, but I also want to make sure that the that my five neighbors on my street block are safe, too, because those are the ones that are most likely going to get me sick right. when we're going across the street or going to each other's houses for dinner parties and things like that. So, yeah, same concept. I want to be safe. I should make sure my neighborhood's safe, too. Right. Granted, now some people will stop their neighborhood at the borderline. That is up to everyone else. I mean... If we were Australia, I'd say, okay, yeah, maybe some kind of a border system, maybe whatever. But at the same time, it's like we're connected to Canada. Canada's connected. We're connected to Mexico. Like there's a big long strip of what we're connected to. Do you or don't you boils down to the why. Right. If you knew that, okay, let me put it to you this way. Do I think there should be stricter border control laws? No, not really given the fact of what most of these people are running from. I don't really feel that that's productive. I don't think that's really solving a problem. Right. The problem is once they get here, few people feel that they're uh, illegally documented, so they're more of a leech on the, on the financial system of the country and this and that. Yeah, I can give it that standpoint. I can understand that because there is a lot of loopholes and a lot of money does fall through those cracks. Sometimes it falls through those cracks on purpose right. to, in order to gain maybe votes or followings of political stance, whatever it is. But yeah. I get it. The money falls through the cracks sometimes. But they're running for a reason. Some of them are coming here to just get money. And that's come. They're, they're coming from Canada. They're coming from Europe. They're coming from everywhere. People do that. It's just this is a country that is just predicated on the idea of come and be be something. Land it's, of opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. This is a land of opportunity. Land of opportunity. So <laughs> when people actually start taking advantage of that opportunity, you can't really get too mad because you kind of left your dick in the wind when you did that by right. telling people, hey, come and have the land of opportunity, sugar right. and honey. So, but... At the same time, you also have to understand that, hey, it, I could prove to you that the Sinaloa cartel was coming over the border daily and that mm, 25 to 30% of your kidnappings or whatever and this and that and your 80% of your drugs and this and that and problems were coming from provably from cartels running it straight across your border. Right. At that point, <clears throat> then I'd have a justifiable reason for saying I want a border. You know what I mean? Because then you can enforce that border. The problem is you have... Okay, take the TSA, for example. TSA, don't get mad. If you work for the TSA, you do a great job and you're appreciated, but this is just a personal opinion. The TSA didn't really exist before 9-11. Right. 
I, I don't remember planes blowing up and crashing before 9-11. So right. what what all of a sudden was this invisible yeah. thing that they're doing now that's stopping it? Like, it was always something else. Like at one, And they came up with the dude with the bomb in his shoe. And it's like, at this point, you got to think, well, are they just coming up with shit to say they caught so they can give you the illusion that they're they're an existing product for a reason, like they're an existing entity for a reason. Right, right. So it's like these, uh, there's a lot of uh, false safeties. I ask, that, I ask people all the time when they gripe about their freedoms being taken of this and that and this and right. that, and I ask them, I go, well, at the same time, <clears throat> what freedoms did you really have before Right. that are now magically being taken away? It's just like... There's more exposure to all those things now with social media being so prevalent. I mean, look at uh, Rodney King. Right. When that stuff went down on the highway, mm -hmm. the only reason we knew about it was because dude happened to be in the right place at the right time with a camera. That shit was going down all the, all time. the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. It's yeah. just that there was no way for it to be shown to the masses. Right. right. Blind, blind your citizens and whatever. Now, this doesn't mean I'm saying anything negative toward law enforcement. I'm just saying that yeah. the shit, there, there's always... <clears throat> Bad stuff happens. It's just now that with the with the rise of social media and technology, we have now been given exposure to it all, and it's an oversaturation. It's an oversaturation of exposure. Of exposure. Yeah, it's insane. That's why people are panicking because they're like, "Wow, it's really like that." Yeah, and that's the thing too. They're panicking. It's always been, it's like, always that. been like that. Yeah, it's always been like that. Yeah. Like it's just you saw that stuff all the time. It's just you could nobody, not everyone had a fucking camera in their yeah. pocket. Yeah, you could and, film and, everywhere. Yeah, it's like, dude. And that's the sad part is when I see videos of people standing there and all I see is them videotaping it. Yeah. Like oh. when I see bad shit going down, it's like now sometimes you don't want to stick your nose in somewhere it doesn't belong because it's like, yeah. yo, they're fighting over a knife or something. I'm ah, I don't know either of those dudes, but I don't want someone to get stabbed yeah, in front of me right, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, right. you shouldn't be sitting there videotaping it. Yeah, yeah, it should have been. And that's yeah. just what they do. They stand around and videotape. I've seen so many people. And they could try and ask, solve the problem yeah. versus filming it. Dude, I've yeah. seen so many people on film asking for help. Right. And people are just filming it. And right. it's like, what is wrong? And that's the that's what's wrong with society, dude. Yeah, I fucking hate it. They, they all want their 15 fucking minutes, which now it's not even 15 fucking minutes, people. It's 15 seconds. And I guarantee you there'll be a million people that go, oh, okay, whatever has been. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you boot, you burned up your 15 seconds. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't either. But yeah. the reality is that you're getting mad about it because I'm right. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's how I'll look at them and go, you're getting right. mad because you know I'm right. You all want your 15 minutes, your 15 seconds. Your oh, look at my video. Oh, my, look. Yeah. Everybody wants it. Everybody wants it. It's it's yeah. a dawn and age of if you can get your face in front of one of these, yeah. you'll be famous. Reality wins now. Like before yeah. it was like super, like, you know, Hollywood was like, fucking you know it was they were it but yeah now the people that are it are the ones that are speaking the truth online you know and podcast and shit like this real motherfuckers mm -hmm. not fake people those are the people that people are looking up to nowadays and that's a good thing because there's too much bullshit we don't look at superstars the way we used to no god just look at the fucking mayweather fight and the <laughs> basket dude i feel i felt like i literally i'm a grown man i don't generally cry a lot you yeah. know yeah 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 but i shed a tear when this whole Ben Askren, Mayweather, fucking Tyrone Woodley shit came about. I shed a tear for boxing, dude, because yeah. they're like, oh. And, and this isn't me hating on them for making money. Yeah, dude, if you're going to be a clown in a circus show, you better get fucking paid. Right. Because nobody's taking you fucking seriously. Yeah. So you better get paid. Connor yeah. said it best. Hate me. I can. They can love you tomorrow and hate you tomorrow. Make sure you get paid both days. Like right. it makes sense. Get it. Go get your money. But the thing is, like Mayweather doesn't need the money. No, he just yeah. He's, you know, yeah. It, it, he doesn't need the money. The fucking Paul brother, whatever. I guess yeah, he needs the money. He doesn't need it, but like their goal is to make money right now, so right. it's right up his alley. Right. But it's like, why? Why are we? giving time and energy and viewership to now granted i understand there is a rest of a card there are real boxers fighting on that card now unfortunately it's a double-sided coin you got to buy that whole fucking card yeah in order to see all those fights well eh, you really don't because they're streaming there's pirating there's facebook there's instagram at the end of the day if i really want to watch your fights thriller if i really want to watch your fights i'm not going to give you a fucking penny and i'm still going to watch your fights and that's the reality of it Right. Because there's so much free ability access to watch it. I can pick which fight I want to fucking watch with a Roku and a fucking fire stick. Right. Oh, I don't want to watch the whole card. I want to watch just this fight right here because that's an actual boxing fight. Right. Like, so I'm not hating on them making money. They want, they built themselves up. They built the brand. I'm not right. hating on that. Right. What I'm hating on is the fact that we're giving into it 
and that money that's being paid to them could be spent on actual fights and paying fighters better. Real fights, yeah. Uh, Real I have fights. A, I have a theory on this. Okay, Ooh. one, they're, they're, it's a sales pitch, right? They give yeah. us on every one. They always say there's going to be a knockout. That's why we watch. There's going <laughs> to be a knockout because right. if we knew there was going to go eight rounds, we'd never watch it. Oh, yeah. We have no interest. But I think the Paul brothers are saying, "How about this? These fighters aren't getting paid." There's a huge market here. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out there and I'm going to start fighting, and then I'll go to fight the best. Who's the best? I'll fight him. And just get all the money that's and, out there. Well, no. And then I'll start a fight company, and I'll tell people, hey, look, I went and fought. Come play with me, and look, I got paid. I'll get you paid, too. <laughs> and I get the realer. I guarantee this watching two two years. Logan Paul and Jake Paul will start their own MMA fight company, and they're going to say, look, we get you paid. Leave Dana White. Now, yeah, now that... I see someone doing very. Yeah, so the problem is I having the money to do that, though. Yeah, I think they're going to. There's because they are smart and they have a bigger plan than just fighting. What, what was their actual pool? I heard two numbers on their buy. I heard a million, a million plus, sales. but then I also heard it was six hundred to six hundred and fifty. Yeah, yesterday thousand. they said a million pay per view buys. Yeah, see, so maybe, maybe not. But that might be the lie too to get you to keep. And that's what I'm it. saying too. Is you I've know, seen. We don't believe anything. I've seen numbers come in before that, like a week later, it turns out it's like, dude, it was like half of that. How about this? Did he get knocked out? It looked like he well, knocked there it out and held him. <laughs> Dude, I saw that. I okay. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. All right. <laughs> I saw I saw that video. It looks it looks like he gets clipped and like falls forward and like Mayweather catches him and like kind of holds him up, but it looks like he's just locking up. But it looks rounds, like Mayweather kind of yeah. caught him. And if you watch it, now okay, here's the thing. It's one of those things where if I show you a video and go, hey, what do you hear? Do you hear the dog is lonely? And then you hear the audio and it sounds like the dog is lonely. Yep. Same thing. If we show you the video now, you're going to look at it going, okay, does he get knocked out or not? No. They need to just show you a clip and just go, hey, watch this clip and tell me what you think. And then watch it and have him go, oh, dude, did that guy get knocked out? Okay. Right. To everyone watching, it looked like he got knocked out. Was it staged? Was it real? Yeah. I who cares? Yeah. At the end of the day, they've got your money. You yeah. paid for it. Yeah. Who cares? I didn't see the fight. I heard it was he. Carried, I didn't either, like, bro. I've like you said, he carried him through the fight. He dude, carried it looked, him. It looked like that's what they're talking about. He <laughs> carried him like he kind of like kept him going through the whole fight. What I mean, was that movie, The Bodyguard, with uh, Harrison Ford and uh, Whitney, uh, Houston. Whitney Houston? Yeah, dude, that's what that fucking fight. I saw clips <laughs> of it reminding me of. It's just them hugging the whole time, and uh, and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit, dude? Yeah, funny Come shit. On. Yeah, it was just it's a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like I said, at the end of the day, I, I hope they got paid because if you're going to be the head clown of the circus, you should probably get paid. Yeah, and I feel like Mayweather kind of like shouldn't have taken that fight. I thought it kind of like watered him down a little bit. But, <sighs> you know, I mean, it, I don't when, know. When you're not fighting pro anymore, and, and that's what I'm saying is I, I'd hate to find out that Mayweather needed the money, but he doesn't need the money. He's got FU money for the rest of your life. He's yeah, got yeah. godlike money. So, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, so – Here's where he hits him. Let's see. Boom, boom. Boom. Got his hands. Oh. Boom. Right there. Hey, wake up, boo. Yeah. See, so he might have wobbled him. Yeah, yeah, he wobbled him. He wobbled him, but then he caught him, and then he felt his feet. He like, wants to keep him up. I don't know. He underhooks his right hand pretty good. Overhook. Look at the right hand. He overhooks it pretty good. You see? Mm -hmm. He overhooks that right arm under, look under Mayweather's armpit on his left arm. See? That right arm of, of uh, Paul's kind of goes right where it should he to looks keep himself. He looks really stunned, though. He looks stunned, but he looks aware. Aware and stunned. Yeah, like yeah. maybe Mayweather was, oh, fuck, sorry, dog, didn't mean to hit you that hard. You know what I mean? Because, like, yeah. I was just, dude, I was so sure they that. They said it was fixed and shit. That, of course it's fixed. There's yeah. no winner. Yeah. Of yeah. course you can go to knock out. But here's the thing. At that size, reach, and size, and weight disadvantage, if Mayweather goes for the knockout and, say, doesn't quite climb that elevator right at the right time and gets clipped hard with the intent of getting knocked out by yeah. your opponent, like your opponent just says, fuck it, and goes off script, yeah. I thought that was actually going to happen. Yeah. I thought motherfucker was going to go off script and be like, you know what? I'm going to knock this motherfucker out. And just like round three, just fucking crack Mayweather when he's not expecting it because it's not supposed to be. That, oh, that's yeah. not the script, dog. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, he might be a tough motherfucker too. Yeah, because like, yeah. but at the end of the day, look, when they had the whole hat incident yeah, and he stole the dude's fucking hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> if if Mayweather's as OG as they all make him out to be and he mm -hmm. claims and, he, and we all know he's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And his crew is and all that stuff. How the fuck are they gonna snatch that hat off? And he's not walking out of there without a beating. He's gonna get yeah. They're gonna fight. 
Yeah, it's going to happen. Something's Not to happen. mention the massive amounts of Gray and Mayweather's beard at that time when that yeah. hat got stolen, dude. Because I think that was just a randomly staged thing. Yeah. And he was like, well, I don't have my Just for Men in yet. Because his beard looked a lot darker come photo ops and promos and shit. But that month, he was in like a fucking windbreaker track suit. Yeah. And he just had a hat. I'm like, when the fuck do we ever see him wear a hat that, first off, doesn't really have his logo on it, first off. Right. Money's Always got his brand on him. Right. Always. That is rule number one in self branded marketing is you right. wear your sh- you wear I'm, your shit. I'm fucking Halo. Do you That's see what right. I'm saying? Yeah, I'm Halo. Like Halo. it's so it's brand marketing. You yeah. always wear your shit. Cause if you're not wearing your shit, why should I wear your shit? Yeah, why should I and wear that's, Nike? And yeah. that's you know, you see people all the time with the team money tee. You know, it's all yeah. all the time. Why? Because him and his crew rock that shit. That's, that's their shit. That's right. So you know, when he snatched his hat off, I was like, ah, any hope, any hope that this was gonna be a real fight just went out the fucking window for me. Right. Right. I I don't take those fights seriously. And I, I refuse either. I refuse to donate my financial or my time. Yeah. Like, why? I don't need to. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, right. I don't. I don't watch it. I don't watch the fights. I just hear about it on fucking Facebook. You know? Yes. The, 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 the Tyson, Roy Jones thing was kind of cool because it was new. It was the first time we'd see something like that in a long time. And yeah. everyone was kind of curious. But yeah. then when it kind of ended in an exhibition draw, eh. Mm. Everyone kind of lost interest. Now they're just trying to run with it. They want to see the but winner. But they're just coming up with fucking ridiculous acts. Yeah. Like fucking the Paul Askren thing. Yeah. The fuck out of here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's Dude. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You don't do that. Ha- Askren wasn't even ready to fight. He came oh. in out of shape. He didn't He didn't give a fuck. He just got that payday and did That was a fucking pay me fuck all of you is what that was. He Because here's the thing. Askren doesn't give a fuck what we think about him. No, he doesn't Askren give, doesn't give a fuck if the MMA community is disappointed in him. Yeah. They don't, they, he doesn't care. And he shouldn't. Yeah. Like, yeah. who are we? We're, who are we? Shout First out, off. Shout out to Askren for getting that paper. Yeah, man. dude. Because like I said. <laughs> he got that paper. He got paid. Out. But at the end of the yeah. day, it's like, what do we... Who are we? Because yeah. we're just, I mean, granted now, you're supposed to respect your fans and this and that, but at the end of the day, we, a lot of us haven't done what he's right. done. Right. You know, none of us has gotten blasted in five seconds by Jorge right. Masvidal. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, he got blasted, but dude, I dare you to fucking climb in there with Jorge Masvidal. Yeah, yeah, he's going to do things. He's gonna do things <laughs> he is going fuck. to fuck you up. He's a fucking monster, yeah. So, for a guy like Askren to get in there, uh, to get in with another man knowing that you know a guy like Asvidal is about to get, get across from you and doesn't right. like you and wants to hurt you. Right. So what if you got blasted in five seconds? You still got in there and said, fucking let's go. Right. And he he could have just as easily fucking missed that knee and got double-legged and got ground and pounded in like 30 seconds. Uh, just as easy. Yeah, yeah. So, so give him credit. Yep. Dude got paid. Yeah, got paid, man. But man, that was embarrassing for fucking yeah. ever. Damn, dude. I just want to see a real... Not not these side shows. No, real fucking... Real MMA fighter versus a boxer. Like, the one time we got close, we got... Like, she put her mouth on the tip. The one time we got close yeah. was the Ra- Randy Couture and... Uh, what the fuck was that guy's name? Um, it was a boxer. He James le- Tooney. Ja- yeah, yeah, yeah. James Tooney. He came over and had... And fucking had to, a boxer came in and tried to fucking throw him with Couture on a UFC card. Yeah. It was a freak show fight, and they were like, yeah, this boxer, he's like, I'm going to go into your guys' world, and I'm going to show you how fucking easy it is to knock you guys out. Randy and Couture, fucked him up. Yeah, and Randy's like, Fuck I'm you. your Huckleberry. Let's go. Randy was down for that shit, dude. Because, I'm a big fan of Randy. Yeah, back then, they were the face. But what about the um, the other one with the James Tony and um, the tall, skinny guy? Um, uh, he got his arm broken. Oh, um. Tim Sylvia. He got knocked the fuck out. They said no yeah. kicking, only punching. And then Tim went out there. First thing he did was kick fucking James Toon Lane. He's like, what'd you do? And then knocks him the fuck out in one punch. That's crazy. <laughs> I've seen, um, fuck, it's old school, old school WEC days. Uh, he took a boxing fight. Yes. And he threw a knee. Mm-hmm. And, like, got DQ'd from the boxing fight. The boxing fight was at the Palace. Right. It was, like, a tough man or a boxing event. But it wasn't It wasn't MMA or kickboxing. So there was no knees. It was just fucking hands only. Yeah, yeah. And they, like, got into it. And he, like, grabbed him and, like, fucking clinched kneed the guy. And they're like, whoa, whoa, break. Warning. What are you doing? Yeah. And then, like, he did it again or something, dude. Fuck, they were like, that's it. We're done. We're done. You're fucking it up. Don't know the fucking rules. Just And they're wilding out. Yeah. And I know the uh, Damn, the cat. He was, like, a bodybuilder. 
um, good looking dude, you know, staying in shape. Marketable, but yeah, it was. Uh, I want to say it wasn't Shane Delosario. Shane Delosario, a different guy, way way better guy. Um, fuck, the name will come to me when I least expect it, dude. Right. But anyway, it's irrelevant. So, yeah. But um, yeah, but we just kind of got sidetracked and off on a tangent, dude. I do that sometimes. It's fun though. Hey, hey man, we're here to shoot. I'm shit. I'm I'm semi passionate about shit and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, know. hey man, we're glad you're here showing all that passion and um. But you've been a martial artist. You're like, when did you start martial arts? Martial arts in general? Yeah, in general. When, when I was did like you? Six. Okay, so you've been doing it since you were a kid. That's a good thing. You know. Yeah, I, my parents got in, got me into it because right. we were getting beat up all the time because we had long hair. Right. So we were getting beat up. All we were getting beat the up. Natives, yes, sir. Yeah. So my parents were like, hey. You know, you're, you're going to need to learn to buy. They weren't the kind of parents were like, today, it's like, my son can bully your son and pick on your son, and the second your kid stands up for themselves, or you keep touching my kid, and my kid says, don't touch me, and you touch me again, and my kid busts you in the nose, like, that's your kid's fault, and that's your bad for letting your kid right. get away with thinking they can bully kids. Like, I get it. Some people will look at that approach and go, oh, violence isn't the answer. Agreed. <clears throat> violence is not the first answer. But sometimes violence is the answer because that's how you get not compliance, but that's how you get like you learn. There's a line. Yeah, you, you learn. Like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna fuck with Timmy anymore. Timmy, uh, punch. No, no, I don't want to go. You guys go ahead. We're gonna go fuck with Timmy. I'm not right. gonna fuck with Timmy. Now, granted, if my kid goes and like starts a fight or something, that kid's probably gonna be in trouble. Right. I'm gonna apologize refusely to the parents. Ask if there's anything I can do. Whatever. Fight us all to that. But if my kid's in the wrong, my kid's gonna be in the wrong. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah. But it's like at the end of the day, if I find out your kid kept touching my kid, my kid said, "Dude, stop touching me," and your kid did it again. Right. At that kid, my time, my kid's got permission to whip your kid's ass. That's right. Because the next step is now you pushing, or now you're gonna hit, or it leads to all kinds of things. You right. gotta draw. You gotta teach your kid to have a line, not. Not draw your line in the sand, so to speak, because that sounds like confrontational. But more, right. have a line that you are comfortable with. And if you're not comfortable anymore and you've asked nicely, fucking yeah. all bets are off, dude. Yeah, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm walking down the street. You touch me, you're going to get hit because yeah. that's where we're taught how to defend Aim ourselves. for the throat. Yeah, ape from the throat. You know, <laughs> oh, he brushed the uh, crushed Timmy's esophagus yeah. there. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, what happened, though? Well, you know, witnesses are saying he kept bothering Timmy, and <laughs> Timmy asked him to stop. Hey, it's a tough world, man. Yeah. You, yeah, we grew up tough fighting in stickers and stuff. But it was, you know, because it was different, because parents right. told you to stand up for yourself back then. So, right. like I said, so I got into it when I was six. Right. I got into karate. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so I went, I started karate. I actually started at American Academy of Martial Arts. It is over here in Clo Barnyard Shopping Clovis Center. Avenue, yeah, it's Tom right Levesque. Next to the faux 2006. Yeah, so and none of that used to be there. Yeah. It used to be so, just a few handful of couple, couple things in there, but yeah. that's where he had it. Aldo's. Aldo's. Yeah. Aldo's. So Tom Pizza. Levesque started that place, and I started in there, and I did that till I was about 12. Right. And then that's when Pops went to prison. So when yeah. Pops went to prison, that kind of stopped. There was there was right. overnight there was no money for that anymore. That right. literally was a, a financial thing. But it was so important and it was something that was and bear in mind, parents, when you hear this, my mom made this decision because it was so fundamentally important that she felt at that time that as soon as she could get me back in, she did. Right. Whether it was because it was a, a, a family member helped out or I got rise from a friend that was going. So I went back. But at this time I went back, it uh, was at a different spot. Tom still had this place, but now he had had this place over here on Bullard and Marks where, uh, you know where Ovidio's is? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like a door or two over from Ovidio's. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we went there, and at this time when I went back, I was introduced to uh, Matt Smith. So that's when I meet Matt for the first time. And now I'm like... 15-ish, almost 16. I'm right. very different stage in my life. M Matt didn't really know me, you know, yeah. back then. I mean, he did because he was still teaching back then, but it was a lot different because he had interacted with my dad before. Right. Um, and so he knew... He knew like the kind of guy my dad was, right? And understood the type of man he was because Matt had a heavy uh, background in psychology and things like that, and he still does. Right. So he understood that. So when I came back to to martial arts around like, like I said, like 14, 15, 16, somewhere in that range, it was before I could drive. I know that I was like around a freshman in high school right. is when I went back. So I'm around 15 ish, 16. Mm -hmm. So I go back and I'm introduced to Matt again, and at that point I'm introduced to jujitsu. Yes. So now I'm doing karate. I'm I I meet Dan and Dave Camarillo, the Camarillo yeah. brothers, which those guys have been around uh, for fucking 
ever. Legends, yeah. Legends. I mean, I remember going to tournaments with these guys. I remember staying up until like 2, 3, 4 in the morning, yeah. days before <laughs> tournaments in, in Bakersfield and stuff, playing right. Killer Instinct on the Nintendo 64. Yeah. Like, we would stay up all night. Yeah. So it was a very different mindset. Um, so I'm introduced to BJJ, and I'm introduced to these guys. I'm introduced to BJ Penn. Back yeah. when he was right. ba- baby J still wave. I mean, yeah. I saw him at Submission Wars <clears throat> two back in like nineteen fucking ninety two. Awesome. And I just went to watch. I'm right. like fifteen, sixteen at this point. I'm like really dipping. I'm dipping my toes into this because Matt introduced me to it. Because a he was trying to introduce the school to it, right. and b he felt this might be a good outlet for me at that point. Right. It was a very competitive, very solo reliant. Uh, art, uh, you would get to use what you learn more often because with what I was learning at the time, which was karate and things like that, don't worry, I got a, I got a black belt at 16, mm-hmm. it has its purpose. Right. And I was learning at the time in order to defend myself. Now, granted, the chances of you using that said knowledge in order to defend yourself were far and few between. Right. This was something that he felt would be a good outlet and would allow me to use it on a regular basis because you would right. daily, you'd be competing daily either by yourself with other teammates or against other schools and stuff. So, and I'm watching BJ Penn just fucking walk out in jujitsu pants and no top and just fucking subbing these dudes. I'm watching Dan, Dan walk out and these dudes were young. These dudes were like 21, 22, yeah. 23 year range. Yeah. These dudes were young still. They yeah. were just getting heavy into it. And so, like, I'm introduced to that. So I start down that path of jujitsu, and I'm going to like Las Vegas. I'm winning like nogi tournaments. I'm fucking subbing all these dudes with triangles. And you got my little brother on the video going, "Oh, there's another senior sleepy time." Yeah. Like I'm just sleeping dudes on the on the mats, right? right? So, and I'm heavy into it. And I'm heavy into it. Yes. And then uh. it was around this point that Matt decided that he was going to leave the gym. Because he wanted us to be able to compete in jujitsu and this and that. And the Tom at the time didn't feel that that was something he wanted. And so they had kind of just a, a differing of opinions, so to speak. So Matt left. Tom kept his school. We opened up one right across the fucking street. Right. I mean, yeah. it was kind of at that point where Matt was just kind of like, nah, fuck you. Yeah. And I'm not sure if that's what he was doing. But like right. when you open a gym right across the fucking street, you're basically saying, yes, yeah, so you're done here. You're saying fuck you. Kid. I'm gonna I'm gonna get all your guys. We're gonna go right across the street. That way nobody has to travel change their travel plans. Right. They just go across the street now. Yeah. So we did that. We started getting heavy in the competition. And then um I I didn't really teeter off of it, but I started to kind of reach a point to where and this sounds this confess very, you know, narcissistic and easy kitchen, but I reached a point to where I wasn't really being all that challenged at that point. I I started just winning tournament after tournament after tournament and it was starting to almost get uh, complacent almost. And then I decided I was going to try to do something with my life. Um, and I went to the I went to the police academy. I did that for like six years back in like 2000. So I did that. And when that didn't pan out, because I, you know, what's silly is I don't know. I, looking back on it now, I don't know how I didn't research it better. Right. To be honest. Right. So, when you go to the police academy, all they require, and this is nothing against law enforcement. This yeah, is yeah, just yeah. my own lack of yeah. doing my due diligence of research. Right. It's on me, 100%. Right. So... You can go to the police academy when you're 18. Right. It's really not suggested for the simple fact that no one's going to touch you till you're 21. Right. No city department. I got all the way to like two city panel interviews with like, you know, chiefs and, and sergeants and things like that for the final, you know, final right. panel interviews. And the bad thing the day, they were like, dude, you're like 19. We can't give a kid a 19 year old kid a gun and a badge. Right. Like we'd, n- we'd never be able to justify any incident that you were involved because at the end of the day, you lack life experience. You're you'd right. have you'd have nothing to rely on. Go in my experience wouldn't be a statement that you could say, and I'd be like, yeah, you got a good point. Yeah. And so I just swallowed the pill and right. and said, okay, so but the the certificate you get only lasts for three years until you get picked up. So I was around year two because it takes about six months for a whole turnaround on an interview process with the department. It takes them takes them right. Um, and I was getting like really frustrated, like super frustrated because now I had now had no real direction, no real purpose, wasn't right. sure what I was gonna do. I had started getting into MMA. Uh, training more so just to stay in shape because a lot of the interviews would say hey well what are you doing to stay in shape right now blah because after the academy which is it's three days a week it's pretty pretty good and intense workout you get in really good shape totally. so they ask you what are you doing to stay in shape because they know you're coming out of the academy in fucking shape like right. they know you are you're ready. you don't you don't graduate from the academy if you're not at least in some shape which granted i know there'd be a contradictive to some of the officers you see today and they're a little on the heavy side so people would say how i don't no. Well, they and come I, out of the academy skinny. But though. they come out healthy. They come out healthy. Skinny. So, but I mean, it, realistically, I see a lot of cops today. I'm like, man, if that guy was in a little better shape or knew some jujitsu, he probably wouldn't have had to shoot that young man. You know, yeah. and I and that's that's where I look at it from. Yeah. 
you have you need to have better resources at your disposal consistently and confidently. Right. I see these dudes fumbling on the ground for their lives, like their life is flashing before their eyes. Why? Because it is. Yeah. Because they don't know what the fuck is going on. They don't know how to fight. They don't know how to defend themselves. Back when I fought Phil Perez. Yeah. Way back in the day, Way like back. he was running with like the Bulldogs at the time, yeah, yeah. and like law enforcement guys were telling me, I'm like, and we tried to tell law enforcement, like, look, these guys are doing this shit today. Yeah, right. Bulldog gang members, everyone, they are training this shit in gyms, in warehouses, in back fucking yards. They have somebody running tapes. They got DVDs. They got VHS tapes. They've got somebody that goes to a gym, a real gym, and then brings it back to them and teaches them. Like right. dudes are doing this on the street. If you're not learning it, you're gonna fucking get killed. Yeah, you gotta learn it, and yeah. that's and the, our proving point was that fight with Phil, right? Because we showed them. I mean, I won that fight, but we yeah. showed them. We go, look, look at that fucking fight Cole just had, and we because we had guys like Sid and Cedric and stuff. We had a lot of law enforcement on the time on the on the jujitsu team, and they brought in their superiors when they were like, look, they're like, hey, right. look at this shit. Yeah, like if these are these are the guys that are on the street today right now doing this. Why are we not doing this? And it right. just slowly trickled into like a jujitsu program that they were allowed in. Awesome. And I remember teaching. No, not awesome because it wasn't real shit. It, they weren't. I mean, the jujitsu uh, program. The jujitsu programs, yeah, but it was like on their own bill. Yeah. Officers couldn't do it and be right. paid time on. It was all on their own. It was if you got hurt doing that, you were out on your disability pay of, of having to take. You'd have to be taking time paid off without without pay. So it was it set up a lot of roadblocks right. because it was in its infancy. Mm-hmm. Law enforcement wasn't really sold on it. And they they were sold on the fact that well, the training right. we give at our academies and stuff like that is sufficient. And the reality right. of it was for certain things, yeah. For some like that, I did not agree with at the time. Yeah. And I kind of still don't. So you started jiu-jitsu at a young age. Super young. Like, what was it? I think I uh, read up on it a little bit on you. 96? Yeah, I was like 96, I think, was like my first tournament. Right. I was rocking the top knot with the fucking yeah. braided ponytail at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you started way back then. And you also fought in the WEC. Yeah. You made history there. You were the first featherweight mm-hmm. champion of the history of the show. Yeah. So when they started divvying, divvying out belts for those weight classes, yeah. I, I earned a spot on it. But that's awesome. That I mean, but dude, my I'd say like eighty percent of my career was probably spent out there with right. uh, and majority of it was spent out there with Reed and Scott and then they moved on and then I got to spend I was fortunate enough that and see here's the thing. If if that place if the palace didn't have the right promoter right doing that out there you wouldn't have had what you had out there you had christian print up running the boxing and stuff out there for years right. basically writing the blueprint and mm-hmm. building like the game plan and then scott and scott adams and reed harris came in with this new idea and this this new concept this new sport and they were like hey right. this is gonna go right you know what i mean they're like yeah. we need to get in on this so yeah. they ran that and they they built that thing up i mean they let me put it this way they built that thing up so well that the ufc came and said hey can we can we buy that from you because here's what they did <laughs> yeah the okay so the ufc went around and and did things like that and they bought up what they felt would be competition right. you weren't really competition though until you got a tv deal and they yeah. didn't offer to buy it until they got that hd tv deal but that was because of what reed and scott had done right. they built it up out there it was just they were the right guys and then after the, the wec was gone uh the palace still wanted to put on shows but they needed someone to do it because they didn't know how to do it they're right. just running a casino they know mm-hmm. the casino industry mm-hmm. and so they needed people so then steps in uh richard goodman and jeremy lukow Right. They step in and they start just fucking killing it, right? Because they both they both understood um, what would be necessary in order to treat the fighters kind of like how they should be treated right. and try to give them the things that they should be given and offer them the platform, a good platform with a good audience and good exposure and all this. They felt those were the key things that were needed. Not, oh, let's get a TV deal for this and that. No, it was just, let's offer the fans good fights, but let's offer them good fights by offering the fighters good ways to market and brand themselves. And just, They kind of built off what Scott and Reed had done and right. did it their own <clears throat> way. And then Jeremy came in with his knowledge of the sport itself from a fighter's perspective because he did that whole journey right. thing for, I want to say, the was it the Hanford Sentinel? I think it was the newspaper he was writing for at the time. He was a journalist for them, and he had this idea project for starting from amateur nobody all the way up to a pro fight. Right. And it was a really cool concept, and they were like, yeah, that sounds awesome. So yeah. he did it, and he 
fucking just chronicled everything leading up to his first pro fight. And man, it was interesting. So if you look at the Jeremy then and now, but right. that was what he brought to it. He was able to look at it and go, this is how we should be treating our fighters. Yeah. This is what I wish I would have had backstage. It's like going camping. You yeah, know, yeah. you go camping, you're like, fuck, I wish I would have brought A, B, and C. You make a quick list. Right. And then you add that list to your already camping list of what to bring. And you're like, man, okay, now I know what to bring. Yeah. It's the same thing. He's right. been there, done that. Not maybe necessarily on the same level as some of us, but did it matter? Right. Swinging a bat, swinging a bat. Triple A or major A, swinging a bat, swinging a bat. Yeah. There's only so many ways you can fucking do it. Yeah. So a uh, low-level MMA fighter making his pro debut or a guy that's had 20 fights, it doesn't matter. The fighters should still be given certain resources and certain exposure and branding, and the show should go a certain way. And that's what they brought into it. So And then they knocked it out of the park. Right. So... It's been a lot. They, yeah, there, yeah, there's yeah. been a lot that's going on out there. But yeah, the yeah. WEC, first 145, and then uh, fucking, then fucking Faber went around and started collecting belts. And that was where that, was where that, that run, that yeah. reign ended. Or at least that, that chapter reign ended. You fought a lot of legends. Mm. You know, Uriah Faber, Jens Pulver, Pulver Barrow. Barrow. Oh, fucking who else? Oma, uh, Omagawa, he ended up going to the UFC. Like, um, there was a point in my career where if I, if I fought you, yeah. Even if I beat you, this was this was the this was my tipping point. Yeah. When people ask me how did I finally get Sean Shelby to call me, this was my tipping point. I had come back from being paralyzed. I had started going on a run, hit some bumps, was doing some cool shit. But I was doing so much more now than what I was doing before the paralyzation right. that I was like, how the fuck am I not in? And then I beat a guy and I left him sleeping. Yeah. And he got in the show and I was like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah, like it just fucked So at that up. point, I just started questioning every sign they made. I was like, oh, this is fucking stupid. But when you were paralyzed from the waist down, correct? Yeah. Okay. So the doctor said that you would never be able to fight again. My neurosurgeon said I'd be lucky if I was able to walk without the use of a walker or a cane or anything like that. Because he expected there to be so much residual damage done from something like MRSA because it's a flesh-eating bacteria. It's literally it just chews away whatever it gets a hold of. Yeah. Um, that's why dudes have holes carved into their arms and their mm. calves and shit from where they dug it out. Mm. And then like um, Kevin Randleman, yeah. that big hole under his armpit, Ooh. it's because they had to cut it out. Wow. Yeah, staph is no joke. So it's no joke. Staph turns into MRSA, and that's right. what I had on my <laughs> spinal cord. So – they told me they're like, it's like, when can I start training again? They're like, eh. I was like, when can I start fighting again? Yeah. And he was like, eh. That's where your story is interesting because you came back after all the doubt, and that shows the yeah. warrior and the big heart and the savageness that you got inside of you. Well, it's so. not just me, man. It's, it, it's the reality of it is, is that it's it's everybody can do that. Yeah. And this sounds so weird because it, it people look at me, oh, it's easy to say. It fucking is easy for me to say because I've experienced it. So it is. I'm not a religious man. Right. You're not going to catch me giving praise to anyone's God or anything yeah. like that. This right. isn't me bashing it. This isn't me bashing it either. Okay. Yeah. This is just me saying. You're just who you are. I'm just who I am. Right. So if if I'm able to do it with just the thought and belief in the fact that I wanted it so bad. Yes. Burning that desire. if you want something bad enough. You, it, it's there. It's there. And I know you get these influencers and people all the time, and life coaches are like, oh, if you want it bad enough, you can get it. Yeah, but it's easy for me to say because I've done it. But the fact is, I've done it. I know it's doable. It's within. whenever I hear someone say, I can't, it's like, dude, I literally don't know what that means. Yeah. There's yeah. no I can't in life. It's not None. that you can't do something, it's that you're choosing not to do what is necessary in order to achieve the desired goal. If I want a house, or I want that car, or I want a better living for my family, or I want to put food on the table. Sometimes there's steps where you do tell them, oh, well, you got to go and do this. You got to go work two 40 hour a week jobs at minimum wage and get very little sleep. But in eight months, bro, I guarantee you a five bedroom house in any neighborhood you want because you're in a position to where you can save up all that money right now because you're living rent free at your parents or whatever. Right. And I told you that. And I told you that by the time you're 2021, 20, you could have your own fucking house. Yeah. Most people within those age brackets and groups and stuff, or most people in general, would just go, "Dude, mm. that's a lot, bro." Yeah, they don't get it. Yeah, you they, know, they, they doubt, it's self doubt. They self doubt. Mm. It's not that it's self doubt. It's almost like inherited laziness. Yeah, they don't want to do what's necessary because in their mind, there's got to be an easier way to do it. 
Yeah. Smarter, not harder. Well, you know what, dude? Sometimes you got to work just harder. Yeah, everybody wants the easy way out, a lot of people. That's yeah. The, that's the easiest way to go. When you wake up in the morning, it's easy to lay in your bed and say, I'm just going to chill. But you got to get your fucking ass up and make shit happen. And it really it really yeah. is easier said than done. I'm not going to lie. It I really is. It, you, it is. You have to want something. My son was asking me this the other day, actually. We were having a conversation. <clears throat> and uh, he's he's going to be 19 this summer. And he goes, "How? what is motivation? Like, how would you describe it? And it was a good question yeah. from him. And I was like, okay, um, motivation would be knowing what the goal is and knowing what the necessary steps are, be it A through C or A through Z, to get to said goal. The motivation is should be derived and solely derived from what is the goal and how bad do you want the goal. Right. How important is that goal to you? And that's where the motivation should come from. I go, the motivation shouldn't come from how hard or how easy you perceive the task to be. Because it could be three little things right. that turn out to be really fucking hard. Or it could be 20 things that look like Everest and it's really just an anthill because they're really easy things. You have to fail a lot to be successful. That's what I try to tell him too. I go, fucking, what's his name? Edison didn't make the light bulb the first time. It took no. him over a thousand fucking tries oh to God. the point to where he probably considered giving up multiple times. But he's like, no, if I just try to, if I just try to change this one thing... That might be it. It's always, dude, like that picture of the dude that's like digging the with the pickaxe underground looking right. for shit. And then like, and you see him walking away disappointed and the diamonds are just on the other side of the wall. Yeah. It's like, dude, you never know when you're so close because right. you never know what happens until it happens. It's like yeah. a heel hook. Yeah. You don't know your knee's going to blow until it blows. Mm. So it's the same thing. You don't both. know you're going to be successful until you become successful people all the time look at rich people and successful people and this and that they go they go oh it's so easy it must be so easy yeah it's so easy for them now, now. because they have put themselves in that position for it to be easy ask them where they were five years ago right. and they're gonna go i was fucking struggling i was scared that this idea was gonna fail i was sure this idea was gonna fail yeah you know, that whole saying of, like, most small businesses go out of business in, like, a first year? Right. It's true. It is. Like, look at all the ones that closed down during this pandemic. Oh, my God. So that's, many people lost their businesses, what? dude. And that's horrible. You know, I do not like to see people like other gyms. They've closed down. And I was not. And I'm like, wow. They just didn't stand up. I stood up. You know, I didn't close. I mean, I closed for the first three weeks. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm staying open. I believe in freedom. And you're not closing me down. You know, the code enforcement, they came out and gave me fines. And, you know, I got a constitutional attorney. And I beat those fines. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, yeah. there's going to be a lot of fallout yeah. over the next, like, six to eight months yeah. of finger pointing and... Yeah. Should I have closed? Should I have not closed? Like, because there's going to be a lot of businesses that at the end of the day might have substantial cases for loss of income and yeah, yeah you there's know, a lot of lawsuits of coming out it's a bunch of bull and i hate politics, politics it, it, and suck. it is and the, but here's the thing now and this is just let's play devil's advocate for a second okay let's yeah. just you know everyone's bashing fauci's dick right now into the ground and bashing <laughs> cdc and yeah. everyone's just getting their shit pushed in right yeah now let's say you're presented with the same scenario you're the guy in charge who is now looking at a virus that we don't know yet only has a 98 point whatever percent of survivability. All you see as a global health organization or as the WHO or the CDC or Fauci or whoever's in charge, all you see is this rapidly spreading virus and by rapidly spreading automatically tells you it's an aggressive strain of something. Aggressive strains usually tend to be deadly. Now, granted, people weren't falling down dead instantly, but people were getting real sick real fast. And when that happens, it two things. It gives you a scare tactic tool to use or it presents fear because it's a very real situation. Now, you're presented with that scenario where you're not quite sure what it is yet. You don't know what it is yet. You don't. It's spreading overseas fast. Oh, shit. Now it's in your country. Mm -hmm. It's spreading fast. It's spreading even faster because it's popping up in multiple spots because of the travel. Because, again, we're a country that gets travel from all over the world. Right. So now it's coming at us in different ports and different areas of our country. Yeah. We've got cruise ships that are standing offline. Like, you have to, you have to think at one point just their jobs alone. And now granted, I know people are going to try to say, oh, this and that, that's on your perspective of what their right. job is. Right. But at the end of the day, if you break it down to the nitty gritty and the simple science of it, their job is to try and protect the people as a whole as fast and effectively as they feel they right. can. Right. Now granted, our infrastructure of our country was shown to be massively faulty. 
Right. Our infrastructure was shown to have so... Bro, I'll be honest. I woke up in the middle of the night one night, and you guys can call me pussies, conspiracies, scary, whatever you want to call me. I legit woke up in the middle of the night thinking, dude, the way our country is right now, if we got invaded, I wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. That's I mean, when I would have hit a country. When A, a country like ours, ours is our, the infrastructure is shown to be so lack of responsiveness. Mm-hmm. Like, you could do anything major in this country, and the average response time to a major incident is surprisingly, scaringly slow. Texas yeah. couldn't take cold weather. Exactly. Cold weather took all of Texas out. Exactly. Oh, so Done. And you know what I mean? To the rest of the state. So yeah. You could take Texas out. Overnight. Overnight. Yeah. The infrastructure was shown to be so faulty because, again, our infrastructure is built on the policy of we're open for business. Yeah. The Best Buy is only meant to be open from A to B. After hours, there could be rats running around. There could be all kinds of shit. There could be a homeless right. dude taking a shit in the corner. It doesn't matter. <laughs> hey, but when them fucking lights come on, baby, that stock market's open. Let's go. Yeah, fuck it. Let's let it rip. This is the land of Disneyland and Hollywood. Yes, sir. They'll sell it. Yeah, easily. easily. But the infrastructure behind the curtain is bad. Is fucked. Yeah, fucking just And the COVID exposed that. Yeah, it exposed how weak our country is and how, like, we don't get along. How vulnerable we are. Vulnerable. And it's showing weakness. And like you said, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if China came through and attacked or any country. I'm just saying, like, it's, well, I'm you, not trying it, to cause panic, I'm but, like, either, it's, but... it's when you want to invade a country, you want to invade them at their weakest and most vulnerable. And Granted, that doesn't serve a point to invade us right now, but no, yeah. it made me really think, dude, we are really we're, we're fucking really, ill-prepared for shit. We're fucking shit up by fighting amongst each other. And in, on one hand, we have people that are relying <laughs> solely on technology we want the advancement of technology COVID actually brought out the reality of how easy it would be to transfer to almost a automated system of living yeah. via like uh, remember the movie Wally Wally remember that fucking movie <laughs> yeah. and all those fucking fat people in the chairs like oh I want the new color outfit yeah bro they were literally shoving that down our throats for like a year yeah. no need to leave your home simply press a button and the order will be delivered to you right they'll even ring the doorbell and walk away and you simply walk out what the fuck? Right. Yeah. Your own... And then people were crying about the fucking... Oh, there's a coin shortage. No, there's not. Yes, there is. There's not enough coins. Dude, there's the same amount of fucking coins. It's just that nobody's paying with cash right now. Right. Everyone's ordering online. Everyone's paying with their credit card. Nobody wants to touch fucking money right now. Yeah. Because yeah. you're dirty motherfuckers and you don't wash your hands. So that's the problem. Right. You know, and people were like, oh, the flu, this, flu, that. Yeah, dude, because we've all been washing our hands and fucking distancing when you feel sick. That's what you should be doing. Like, exactly. if I think I'm sick, I don't go to work. I don't go around people. There should right. be a reason for that. Exactly. So I don't get my coworkers sick. I go to the bathroom. I wash my hands. Why? So I don't get fucking pink eye. Exactly. So when I see people on mass, like, and I've been exposed, I've been in the casino industry. So yeah. when I see people in mass go to the bathroom and not, I instantly know, I would go, oh, boo, dude, we're fucked. Yeah. When I started to hear about it spreading, because remember, like three or four months before that, we yeah. were joking about it. They were joking yeah. about it on the Joe Rogan show. Yeah. And they were watching <clears throat> videos of like a drone telling some little old lady to go back in her house in like China Square or something. Yeah. And it was like yelling at her to go back inside or the authorities would come. And I'm like, that shit was in. We were kind of laughing at it, but it looked intense as fuck, dude. And we're thinking, right. dude, it's bad over there. Right. How did nobody think it was going to get here? We have Disneyland. We have everything. The whole world the comes fuck? here. The we're, fuck? We're, we're the store. We're the fucking yeah. Disneyland of the world. Yes. Everybody loves America. Yeah. Dude, it's, I mean, and think about this. Look at, look at this picture, too. How many parts of our country do you know of? Because you've been in the military, right? Yes, yes. So, you, so you have this information. Yes. How many parts of our country do foreign countries have military presence on? permanent military presence a base not an embassy none, none. not an embassy okay yeah right right how many fucking countries do we have bases in permanent fucking presence permanent presence like we're not going anywhere bitches we're here not maybe, leaving germany maybe not north maybe north korea maybe and even then we're like right on the fucking yeah, dmz we're, right we're, yeah, we're on the dmz right there yeah, so we, we have a heavy right. presence in south mm-hmm. we're on the dmz so like we're we're and don't get me wrong I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I'm saying or twist or take it out of context. I love my country. Amen. Yeah. People start parachuting from the sky. I will pick up a fucking rifle and I will shove one into my son's hand and say, fucking shoot back. 
We're fighting back. We are fighting back or we are dying where we stand. We that are. is when that day comes. I will because I love my country. Yep. Fuck too if you're coming into my country. Now people will be like, oh, Likewise. Right. people do it all the day illegally. Yep, yeah, what they fucking do, but they're not here to fucking kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them might be, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> but that's real. I just don't get how how we can have such a presence in other countries, but none has one here. Yeah. So it's like, I don't feel like why are we why are we all over the place? Yeah, because you know what I mean. Yeah. Now, from a military standpoint, I get it. There's strategic purposes. There is preventive purposes. Like we need to have a base want, here because yeah. if we don't, we, we get be, another Pearl Harbor or something. Yeah, we got to be close to that country that's causing problems. Exactly. We want to influence. Yeah. We want to influence. We want to pre- command presence. We want to have an immediate response if necessary. I mean, because at the end of the day. And again, this isn't me knocking the military at all, so please don't anybody misconstrue what I'm saying. This is just my perspective as an idiot, as a lame, as an uneducated man. <laughs> it's a, it's, and it's a lot of chest puffing in the sense that all of our presences everywhere don't really mean much because when the shit hits the fan, the buttons are going to get pressed. Boots on the ground won't really matter at, at, to a point. Right. There will still be boots on the ground after the bombs fall. There will still be. It's not like the bombs fall and that's it. America, everyone's gone. No, there's going to still be boots on the ground and shit. But you're all going to be living underground for a while in yeah. some places. If if ever coming out of that area, if you happen to be in the wrong place that gets hit, you're right. probably never coming out. The right. the good no. side and bad side of you were saying is we're open for business and that's what you know where the Disneyland is mm-hmm. is because we are so important to the world. Um, any industrialized nation will never invade us because we're financially important to their oh, yeah. economy. The only people who would ever try to invade us would be a third world country, but they're so small and insignificant, it'd be impossible. So because our economy is so important to the world and we keep doing that, it makes it impossible for anybody to attack us because it would be the downfall of their own personal economy. Yeah. Even there, like China, anybody if they, with if enough they attacked power. us, China would fall apart. They yeah. need our money. They need us to be in business. Well, so That's, that's why true. There is a lot of economical... Um, symbiotic yes. reliance on each other that they haven't done it. They like point, each other. No, yeah, exactly. But I'm still going to sell you some shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like you, but I'll sell you weed. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a little weird, but your money's good. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. America's, yeah. But yeah, so that there requires the presence in other places. But like, well, right. I was watching a movie one time and they, they shot out a stat that like we'd never gotten a problem from any country that had a McDonald's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's we've injected ourselves and we're it's also, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, realistically, if you were to cut off all economic trade with any other country, it would get real weird real fast. Yes. But and I'm not an economicalist. I don't know what the actual fallout of the be. You right. know, so some some guy that is a million times smarter than me would have to answer that of what because they would know what the economical fallout would be and what the actual real potential results of that would be if you were to shut off all trade with just everyone, just the hypothetical, just cut it off from everyone. Say we're gonna do our own shit, we're gonna do us, you guys do you. Now the problem with that is the humanitarian's loss. Right. There'd be a lot of boots on the ground that we would pull out from other countries that without those boots on the ground, a lot of genocide, a lot of killing, a lot of just bad stuff happens because us being there. Now, granted, it's like the Avengers. Right. It's, it's like the superheroes in the Marvel Universe where the more of them there are, the more bad guys with equal power there are. Right. And it's just, it goes hand in hand. So now we've kind of painted ourselves into a corner to where, well, we went there to help these people, but now we've kind of put ourselves in a position to where, well, fuck, if we leave... We haven't really built them up, or even though we've tried, they're just not getting it. And as soon as we leave, these pe- these people are going to get wiped out. Yeah. So, at what point do you pick what you feel you? Because at some point, we got to just go. You know what? Yeah, that's it. We're going to worry about just us for a while. It sounds right. cold because yeah. I know there are a lot of countries and and people that survive and depend on our aid and stuff. And at the same time, it's going to be like. We're just going to shut down store right. for a little bit. It's going to be employees only for a while. Right. We're reset. just going to keep it there. Yeah, we're going to a little reset, and we're just going to see what happens. I always say we need to bring all our soldiers back. You know, I love <clears> our <throat> soldiers, and we need to train them, bring them back to America, and then work on our closest allies, you know, Mexico and Canada. If we mm-hmm. don't uh, work on Mexico, yeah, who's like, right there? Yeah, yeah. people were China will buy physically up, and connected no control with China. Yeah. 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 yeah, People we're physically connected with should be, we should just kind of worry about our side for a while. Just like we're everywhere, like Japan. When I went to Japan, you've went to Japan oh, yeah. as well. Um, Major rem- presence. And I also remember your fight. I remember when you fought in Japan, MMA fight. Which Pride. one? The, the good one or the bad one? Because I went twice. Le- Pride. Okay, so the dream. 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 Yeah. Dream. When, yeah. When dream. I fought, uh, Mitch. Uh, fuck. 
you fought. Yoshiro Maeda. Yeah, yeah. Yoshiro Maeda. Yeah. 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 I saw you kick a dude in the face. Is that him? Yeah. And he went out. Yeah, oh. he went out fucking cold, Yeah, bro. so I waited up till like 3 in the morning to watch you. Yeah, fight. dude, a lot so, of fucking... That was hey, a big time difference, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm up at 3 in the morning. I said, I'm going to watch Cole fight. And, man, all I saw was you go up and he, you guys hit that ring. You mm. kicked him in the face. He went out, and I was so happy, and I was screaming. And I was like, yeah. Dude, so. it was insane, bro. I had all Shout out to you on that one, That was bro. an awesome one. That, that was yeah. a last-minute one, too. Yeah. That was like 10 days' notice. That was awesome. But you did it, though. Look, oh, you, yeah. You live your dream, you know, after all that the doubt. And, biggest. Uh, that was one of, when people ask me all the time, like, oh, what's your biggest fight? What's this one, that one? That was probably one of, not like the biggest, but that was like, that was the first time I'd ever been on that kind of stage. You know what I mean? That was huge. Like, it was huge. The way they ran their promotion, the way they did it, the entertainment value. Their entertainment value is fucking insane. Yeah, they're insane. And, you know, going to Japan, you know, like you said, America's everywhere. McDonald's, Taco yeah. Bell, KFC, yeah. Burger King. It's everywhere, man. They had yeah. a, dude, they had a 99 yen I, store. Oh, I love Japan. Did, so, did you love it? Yeah. Oh, dude. Well, I went to, I want to say it was like East Tokyo is where we went the first time. Right. And then the second time I went back, we ended up in Nagoya. Yeah. And Nagoya and East Tokyo are two very different lifestyles. You've got East Tokyo, which is very uh, San Francisco Bay Area type. Uh, it's more of a fisherman's part of the, mm-hmm. the country. It's very quiet, very polite. Very, yeah. And then you've got Nagoya. All city. Nagoya was all city, all current, whatever the Western culture influence was at that time that they were spouting. I mean, there's girls walking around in mini skirts, boots, and cowboy hats. And, I'm, and then before I went with Pop, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So I went with Pop the first time. The second time, Pop couldn't make it. Yes. So I went with my girl. Yes. I took I took my son's mom at the time, and we get there, dude, and all these girls are walking around just scantily clad and shit, right? And, dude, I look over. I could feel it. I look over, and she's just staring at me, dude. Yeah. She's like, oh, did you and Pop have fun last time? And I'm like, no! <laughs> that's not what it was like. I go, no! Yeah. I go, Japan, you're fucking me. So, yeah, dude, yeah, no. I st- I fucking starched that guy, dude. Look, look, he got him right here. Bink, Bam! Bink! And he was out. And oh, then I had to Hendo bomb him. That was so awesome. Dude, so it's like I was Hendo bombing people before Hendo. Yeah. But uh, it, that was and, a nice one. and a lot of people asked, you know, it's not one of those. It was super necessary, and I just couldn't figure this fucking guy out, dude. I was taller than him, and he just kept landing these uppercuts on me. And you can even hear Frank Trigg talking about. It. He's like, "All right, I don't know why you're screwing around still." And yeah, the just, uppercut, he j- threw. yeah, he could yeah. just he kept finding a home for yeah, it. And yeah, I was yeah. like, "God damn it, dude!" Their boxing over there is way better than a lot of people give them credit for. Yeah, they're studs, man. If, yeah, and if you watch they're my savages. Omagawa fight over there, dude, his body movement and head movement. For the boxing aspect, it was just gross, bro. They're great martial artists. Yeah, no, they oh, really are. Well, because they take yes. it very, you serious. know, very serious. It's, yes. They don't really have. Okay, here's the thing: where you get a lot of the athletes in our in our in our area of the globe, or the flat surface, or wherever you yeah, want to yeah. say we are, the fucking turtle in space. Who gives a fuck? You know, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, dude, who gives a fuck if it's a, if it's? <clears throat> that's a question I want to ask real quick. Who gives a fuck if it's round or flat? Oh yeah, the flat. Because at it. the end of the fucking day, when I die and you die. It's still going to be here. It's not going to matter. It don't matter. Yeah. So who cares if it's round or flat? I mean, yeah. I don't know. We don't know like, for sure, but whatever. I don't I'm know. not saying it's flat. I believe the earth is round. I'm just going to throw that out there and say, you know, I do have a side. I picked it. I believe the earth I is picked, round. I picked the round so, earth as well. I, I, I believe there <laughs> We're are not some. not going to fall off the edge. I know. I agree. Yeah. You I know. I, know there's a lot of contradictive shit to yeah. some things that have happened in history, but I yeah. still think it's just, I think. I think some of that stuff happens because we tried to reach beyond our means and right. we had stuck our dick out there and we're kind of like, well, we have to come up with an, a, climax, a climax to this. Like there has to be a we, – we we're going up there. We got to have something to show for it. So I feel that was yeah. – I think everyone got to kind of have ahead of themselves and yeah. a lot of stuff was done to make it look like the race was finished and someone had won and we weren't quite sure who or why yeah. or – why we haven't been back since or anything. So <laughs> I'm just, I am over go down it. that rabbit hole. It's yeah. a rabbit hole. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but um, I do feel that on our side and our globe, you know, it's just like, take care of, take care of our side. Right. Like, that's all we really need to concern about. Cause right. like I said, with Canada and, and Mexico and stuff, like we're connected to them. What happens to them yeah. happens to us. That is more of a symbiotic thing versus what happens to the rest of the globe 
may or may not affect us. People will go, well, it could affect us economically. It could affect us this and that. Well, not if we're closed down to everyone outside. If we're not doing shop, if we're not doing business at the swap meet, yeah. there's no one there to really worry about, oh, hey, how's Miguel's swap meet table going? How's he working on mine? How's that going to affect mine? No, it's not because we're only dealing with ourselves. Right. That changes a lot of the playing field, so to speak. So, But worrying about the ones that we're physically connected to, because that's unfortunately at the end of the day, that is where our enemies will be coming from at that point. Right. You know what I mean? We will have enemies coming over on the land invasion shit like that, whatever yeah. you want to call it, they'll have access. Right. So we do need to worry about those that are connected to us because those are our friends that, regardless of how you want to see it, they get affected, we will become affected in some right. way. Be, be it they get sick, they get invaded, motherfuckers invade Canada, what are they going to do? Throw maple syrup at them? Right. No offense, yeah. my friends in the north, but when's the last time you guys were in one of the world wars? I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, when's the last time you guys got down? Yeah. No, but I know that they're, they're French Canadians. They have their own, you know, history of the wars and stuff. But right. that would be how, you know, you come in through that area. You know, you have access to America still, no matter how well guarded she may be. You're connected physically to that land. Unless somehow we just separate ourselves and become an island. What the fuck is the point of that? That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. You know, so we have to have these open doors. We have to have these open exchange, commerce. We're a business. We have to. America's a business, like you, know? you said. Yeah, we're a business And country. at the end of the day, man, we've been riding high on the hog yeah. and thinking that we're... We're in charge of the world, so to speak. Like not in charge, but we act like we gotta we gotta be part of everything that's going on. Yeah. Something's going on over there. Hey, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Hey, you got oil? Oh, you look like you need some whatever. Yeah, but yeah. you could use some topography. So it's just we kind of just we want to have a presence everywhere so that we can have a presence everywhere because right. we, America's got its hands in all kinds of pies. That's, that's what we are. I mean, okay. Yeah. The American fact that we had we, we had watched the movie War Machine with right. Brad Pitt. Right. We had our hands in heroin. So yeah. why can't we use this area? Well, because it grows this. And the guy explained it very mm-hmm. analytically. It's because it grows this and this grows that and America grows this and it would become a major competitor. So we can't use the we can't use this crops for growing cotton, so right. we use it to grow heroin. Yeah. And then we sell it over here where it's legal. Yeah. Did the same thing in Vietnam. I mean all these things that America's always done, it's always got its hands in pies. It's always, always got its hands in pies. To believe otherwise is wrong. So we have to have that open door policy. Absolutely. Because if not, we're chopping off our own fucking finger that's in that pie. We need to keep them coming. Exactly. So yeah. until we can find a way to self-sustain stably, right. and I don't think we're going to do it. Dude, we can't even... Bro... People hate people because of the colors of fucking skin's different, man. And it's that is it's horrible. it's not, and that's why fucking aliens haven't visited us yet. They saw our own self-destructive tendencies and goes, these motherfuckers can't even be around a dude who's a different color skin. What do you think they're gonna do to us? Yeah, yeah they're not gonna welcome us up with open arms. They're gonna go kill it. Yeah, so. that's why they haven't fucking visited us yet. We're the backwater alley fucking dirt road of the universe. Yeah, so aliens, if you're listening, come visit, man. Dude. We're actually really cool, man. And you know what's funny is they right. could come and visit. And most of the world would be like, no, it's fake. Yeah, yeah, they wouldn't believe it. They wouldn't believe it. Yeah, they would think so. There's so much misinformation and misguiding people and misleading people, intentionally (laughs) misleading people with misinformation is so rampant Mm -hmm. and it's so strong and powerful that if I were to come to you and talk to you about something I wanted you to say, I I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. Can you do that for me today, brother? Can we go down some day? This isn't me. Yeah mocking religion this isn't I me know, no, it's me going that if I speak real slow and confidently and talk about something that I educate myself on and I'll research it too because I want to sell you something I'm going to research and tell you how much better your life's going to be and all this stuff if I do all that most people are going to go okay well hold on he's got something here what's he talking about he sounds, yeah, he sounds like he knows what he's talking sincere. about he sounds sincere he sounds like he Meaningful. is already exactly and he yeah. wants to help me mm-hmm so it, all it that's all it takes to sit down and get people to listen. So if I can right. get down to listen and give them gobbles of misinformation, mm-hmm. they're going to eat it up. They'll eat it up so much that you've now created a system to where you're not wrong, I'm not wrong, you're not right, you're not right, but we both feel that we're so fucking right that we will defend it to the point of violence. Right, yeah. Regardless of whether either of us are right. This is the big thing. Do you really think you're going to have a united people in a country that has a multiple party political system? Think about that. Yeah. From the from the get go, from the top, they automatically want you to pick sides. Right. How the fuck does nobody see that? Yeah, they're they're always yeah they they make from the top they make people 
always fight each other against yeah. each other. It's, it's like It's that. Constant, constant. We want you to be at odds with each other. We want you to hate each other. So we that want we you can to be racial. You. We want you to hate people because of their skin We color. just want it's you, it doesn't matter like what. That. Like, yeah, that's when one thing wasn't working, they go, okay, riots <clears throat> aren't working. Start the race war. That's not working. Start this. It's like, yeah, yeah. they'll keep throwing <laughs> shit at us. <laughs> so no, true. they'll keep throwing shit at us until yeah. they get the compliance control that they feel is adequately enough reached. Right. The whole it's distractions. It's, it's distractions. distractions from real life. Yeah, the magician. Yeah. Hey, look at my hand. Look at my hand. Yeah, look at yeah. my hand. <gasps> Poof. Well, you don't yeah. see what the hand is doing. You're like, oh shit! Doing. I forgot about my motherfucking. I'm supposed to go to work every day. Exactly. I'm over here distracted watching the news and shit. Yeah, Fuck the that. news is telling me to be afraid to go outside. I'm afraid to go outside. Now, granted, some people that message was actually a very scary reality because if they and went it, outside, they were at risk. I get that. And but, they're still walking around with three masks, and I feel bad for those people. They're like very scared, and it's because of the fucking government scaring these people. They've Shame been told on them. to be scared. Shame on them. Just like they're told what to hate. They're right. told who to hate. You, like I said, dude, you got Democratic Party, Republican Party. Just the fact that those two exist should tell you all you need to know about what the government view of you is. They want you to to pick a side. Yeah, they're like, this Shouldn't side this your side. government be more of the sense of how Everyone. do we come together? How do we truly get all on the same page? Mm-hmm. Nope, nope, nope. Fuck, nope. Can't do it. Nope, we need you to you gotta ha- You got to pick one or the other. Pick one. Pick one. Quick. No, then you're fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When you want a one party system, it's because there should only be there should be a government, not a blue, a red. Why? Yeah. I'm What's bo- the point? Because they both have different views. They both have different wants for you. Yep. We want different for you. Bullshit you want different for me. You want different for you and you just want to make your want look like it's something I need. Exactly. That's all that's the that's the trick. Bias, yeah. If you want a trick on how to be in the politics, guys, I really just wrote you out the blueprint. You just have to convince motherfuckers that what you want is what they need. Exactly. And they will vote for you. They will vote for you. They will invade a fucking capital for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they will. That's crazy. It's wild. And I'm not saying they. at the end of the day he told them to do it, but at the end of the day, the reality is that event happened, mm-hmm. be it staged or not, or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. It happened because people believed in somebody so much and their words so much, be it they took it upon themselves to act, be it they were told, what fucking ever, it happened. Right. Because somebody believed in something so much, Right. people died. Yeah, bullshit, yeah. And people what died. was gained yeah. from it? What was the goal? What was the game? Was the goal disruption? Was it to bring a media presence? What was the goal? All that was achieved was collateral damage. Just but collateral right. damage is acceptable to an extent, according to everybody. It's all drama. So at the end of the day, bro, it's they don't want you together. No. They want this is not how they stay in control. This is not how you get Nancy Pelosi being a lifetime politician. She's been in seats <laughs> longer than most of us have been alive. I know. Yeah. That's crazy. Doesn't that make you think that, hmm. Wow. How? If at the end of the day, I'm doing the same thing, enacting the same legislative, doing the same shit every day, my government's doing the same thing, but I'm expecting a different outcome. Hmm. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Right. So I tell people all the time, I tell all these young kids that we I have disagreements with when it comes to politics, and it's like, I'm not going to disregard what you're saying because I think you're stupid or uneducated. I'm going to semi, and I'm not really even disregarding. I just don't agree with you so much because you're unexperienced. Right. You don't, you don't have life experience. You can educate and research yourself all you want, but without life experience mm-hmm. of implementing and executing and experience the execution of those lives, right. it's hard to get a gauge of where you really sit. But at the same time, I will tell those same people, dude, if you want to see these radical ideas you have implemented or you don't agree with the fact that we both, and we'll both agree, somebody shouldn't be in power that long in that type of position. Yeah, they need some term limits, yeah. Exactly, you know? Um, fuck, if you're president, every year you should be revoted on. Yeah. Every year we should be able to make sure you're doing it right again. Or, or one more, even more radical idea that came across my desk. There is no term limit for the presidency. Here's how it works. You are in office until we the people get together and decide that you no longer should be in office. Right. Makes sense. There would be a long enough time that we're, there would constantly be candidates that were either being groomed or educated or trained or reprised or everybody on the expectation that if there is a time where we... And your term could run four years, could run 10. You could be in the year 14. And for some reason, the way you're handling things is just no longer in what people feel. Or by that time, you're kind of too old to be doing it anyway. Right, right. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, I can understand life experience, political life experience, a lifetime of political experience means something. I get it. Right. But at the same time, yo, bro, dude, like shouldn't there be like an age limit to when you should be the guy leading the country? Right, yeah. And this isn't, this isn't 
talking about talking about President Biden or anything like that because yeah. reality was Trump and him were only two years old difference. Right, right. So it doesn't matter who it is. Biden, it's just at some point you have to look at it and go, dude, why is there somebody that's so old who is more in touch with a generational leap backwards of where his politics views come from versus yeah. what the current state of your people are? He's just getting ran by. He's a puppet getting ran by everybody. Yeah, I've, this is. I'll be honest, bro. This is one of the first few times I've really felt that the president is merely a figurehead being controlled by other powers outside. Not like Illuminati or nothing, but, yeah, but this is true. the real first time I felt that this president isn't really the one making the decisions. I don't feel the confidence from him that I feel from yes. all the other presidents. I just at never, all. I, I don't. He's and, confidently giving you to the people, but the, what he's giving to you doesn't seem like. <laughs> No, Uncle Joe, I don't think you came up with that. Yeah. Uncle Joe, I don't. Yeah. That doesn't seem yeah. you know, like I, an idea you'd come up with. I wish him every day. I wish him well. No, you know? I do. And I just. But, but I just don't. I don't have the confidence. I in. honestly think we are very close to seeing our first female president. I think we are very close. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna I don't think anything bad's going to happen to the president. I'm not saying no, that. No, no, no. I think he just might be found maybe incompetent or maybe, yeah. maybe something's going to come out to where maybe there is a deterioration mentally for him right now that we just haven't been made an abbreviation because they got to really get down to the they answer before they that. do that. Yeah. They got to really decide what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. They have to start building report because she's playing a very active role. Right. Very do, active do you, role. Do you watch his speeches? Because Joe Biden uh, can go out there and talk yeah. for Four fucking hours, crack jokes. He is on point. He he's not gonna go away. And Kamala Harris is actually taking a back seat. Mm -hmm. So what's gonna happen is uh, Joe Biden will fill out his thing because he's he's in, in good in, in good standards. He's not wearing a diaper. We see <laughs> we see Trump now. He goes out. He's wearing a diaper now because he can't control. It. He's pissing his pants. <laughs> if you look at the video, he's wearing a diaper. So he's like he's doing good, but he'll he'll end it. But we won't vote Kamala Harris in. Mm. I don't think she's gonna get the vote. She never has in the first place. She was uh, just a a vice president. Is, Really but like that's what a, I'm saying is something they'll remove Biden for one reason or another. Well, he won't go. He's really go. in great shape. Like if you watch his speeches, like he could, like if you put out two thousand words for most people fifty five and older to read, they won't be able to do it. They yeah, can go for no. Two hours. But I mean, in the sense that they're, he's not meant to be in charge for long. Do you get what I'm saying? Like they don't. No, they, he'll, he's gonna go four he's, years. He's out. I don't even think he'll make it to four he's years. Already almost at two, right? Is that um, year over a year? Under under two. A little over a year. Yeah, no? it's almost two years. Is it almost two years yeah. already, dude? Fuck this whole fucking C nineteen thing just fucking fast. spreads everything, dude. It's, fast. it's accelerated time, but I know. Fuck. I don't think. I don't think he makes it to the because end because the, the destruction of a of a party or the effort. Mm. It just it'd be too much. It's too much. That's so like that's why you can't do a president every year because mm. um, even like Trump's policies, like when you create some policies, like the tax rates don't happen till another two years and then yeah. five years and then so like even like when a presidents usually happen. So when Trump was president for four years. Basically, it was all Obama's policies mm. because his policies don't go and work overnight. It no, takes four yeah, or five take years. So, so many years. So now we're kind of riding out the tail Trump's, end of anything Trump, Trump started to try to but finally get starting pushing up. Through. So that, when the tax rates and everything is happening right now, this is actually Trump's policies. That's mm. why they try to stay a second term, and that's when they really get to do stuff mm, with you know? what they've already and been building on. And that's why you got to be there a certain time. But but if you only have one party, that's called a monarchy. Yeah. So we're democratic. That's why we have multiple parties. Well, that's but, the thing. But is, Republicans and Democrats are recent. Before it was the Whig Party, and there's all other parties. So it just goes around. It's all bullshit. But we are supposed to be divided. It, you are right. That's the thing is they, and that's where the at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to is they don't want a, a united front of people. Yes. They just don't. It's you can't control. You can't manipulate. You can't. But at the same time, they might also be taking that from the textbook of if you want to lead your nation or you want to have some control over your citizens so that you can actually keep order. Yeah. Maybe you do have to have four. a separation. Yeah, you know, maybe. Like you, when our founding fathers, you had to be a landowner to vote. You had to be a white landowner to own a gun. Yeah, you they know? really started narrowing down the criteria so that's how to it do was stuff. Originally, women couldn't vote. You know, no one else could own a gun except if you're a landowner. Yeah, you know, so like because they would it, consider that you have no property to protect. At that yeah, point. exactly. So like all these rules, you know, were slowly finally getting to poor. And like so you said. Our countries, as people, we've always been really lazy, mm. and we actually didn't fight for our freedom from the, the British until they put a whiskey tax. Yeah, the, we, we said we're gonna do a stamp tax, like none of us can read. You know, <laughs> like we're gonna do a whiskey tax, like you're, what you did, motherfucker. You're asking me to read I'm stuff now. You? Stop it! You're yeah. asking too much. <laughs> but yeah, well, at the end of the day, that whole uh, divided, or you know, you know, to, you know, united we stand, divided we fall. Like right. Lincoln said it, I Gene think, Floyd. right? <laughs> but um, it's I don't think it's a it's an achievable thing like I said we need potentially the game in Ropex right you know the Roman Apex needs to kind of happen to where shit crumbles 
and a Bill Beckham. And I know there's going to be tons of people going, well, you definitely don't want that. And I agree. Right. I don't <clears throat> because when that when that fucking light switch goes off, it's going to go off for a while and it's yeah. going to be really dark and it's going to yeah. be really scary and it's going to be really bad. It's going to be wild. And that's what I'm saying is do we want to be in that position on our own? Like, the first or thing that goes is all, art and culture are the first thing that yeah. goes. And then basically after that, it's just survival. It's just survival at that point. No, culture if you have no culture what is your society exactly what are you building your foundation on but right. do we want to be in that position on our own or do we want like the whole planet to go down at once yeah you know just, what i mean like it, a... it all has to happen at once yeah and if our own and we're if our collapse happens before anyone else's which is just economically possible yeah. Yeah. um it everything shuts down overnight yeah, yeah it does and you know yeah we got to get it together man as a country and a and that's, it's, it's just too much division, man. And that's yeah. the thing is there's so many people that agree with that thought process that there's too much division that they don't make enough effort to bridge that gap. Right. That's horrible. Yeah. But that's a wild country right now, man. Yeah, dude. It's wild. It's, it's too, Texas got wild too. What was it? Well, it didn't get super wild. Like they, they, uh, they've got that legislation that's in position to pass that you mm-hmm. won't, you won't be required to have a permit to carry a firearm anymore, which is I, at first when I read it too, my eyes kind of went, ah, uh, but then I thought about <laughs> it, crazy. but then I took a step back and I thought about it and you know, granted, that's yeah, freedom. you true, but you won't need the license to carry it. But to my understanding, the requirements to purchase said firearm haven't changed. So if you still want to buy that Smith and Wesson 45 that you can now carry on your hip without the permit. You can now just carry it. Yeah. You still got to pass the background and shit and go through all the loopholes just right. to buy that first. So right. it's not like every Johnny Gangbanger and Joe Lawbreaker could just walk in and be like, kick the door into the fucking local guns and go, load me up. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It just means that everyone who legally owns one now doesn't need a permit anymore required to carry it. Yeah. But, but that's again, it goes to hand with your saying though. This is this is a slippery slope. So they get rid of this one rule, and then they're going to take the next rule away. And then if they give everybody guns, mm-hmm. we're already divided. That's going to help the rich who don't give a fuck about you guys killing each other. True. I always use example as baseball games. You know, back in the day, you used to give us uh, baseball bats as a souvenir, and then yeah. after about a week of that, they're like, "Oh, we fucked up," because it only took about an hour until everybody's just beating the shit out of each other. And like yeah, now, if you go to a sporting event, you can't even have a bottle. They give you oh, yeah. plastic bottles because we'll fuck each other with bottles. So That's imagine that if everybody has a bad gun. bad thing I saw was that plastic bat. They got plastic beer mug bats at the Pelicans yeah. team or whatever. Get, get ready. I saw that and I was like, dude, you could still crack somebody with that fucking thing. Yeah. Get ready. But um, but yeah, it's just yeah, it's, uh, we're going that way. And right. it's just, you know, I don't think we should, we all want to do it on our own. No, I just think it'll get dark and I think it'll be really scary. And it just, I don't, I don't want it to go that direction, but it almost has to happen. So, so like I said, with Texas, the whole, you still got to go through the background check thing, but on that same token, like, think about it. Think about it. If I'm a bad guy, right. And I want to just walk up to any random citizen. Now I've got to guess whether or not that dude's got a gun on him or not. You know what I mean? Which they have to guess anyway. Right. But here's the thing is I'm trying to wrap my head around it. Well, I say now, since I have to guess, now their only guess is, I'm not going to take a time. I'm just going to kill you. And that's the thing is they might start just doing that. But the assumption now is it's just fucking anarchy. That's crazy. And that, But look at the guy that got released. He robbed, what, a bank on Monday, got cut loose, and then robbed a bank on Friday. <laughs> yeah. He, like, robbed one in Madeira yeah. and got chased in the Fresno. I think that was the second one. I think he robbed the yeah. second one in Madeira and got chased back in the Fresno and got caught. And then he's, okay. We did kind of, it's like, what the fuck? How is that happening, though? I mean, who are, why are they making these, like, releasing criminals? They're, they're, the like, COVID reasons are their, their whole reason for it. And plus, they're overpopulation. You know how fucking massively overpopulated the prisons are? Ridiculous. Go check out Avenal. Go check out Corcoran. <clears throat> go check out any fucking prison. I don't give a fuck. Go pick one. Pick your right, favorite. Right. I've been to all of them. Pick your favorite. I've seen all of them. Yeah. <laughs> they're all fucking dirty. They're all scary. They're all ugly. They're all gross. They're all, yeah, they're yeah. fucking prisons. Yeah, they're fucking prisons. You know? Yeah, you don't so, want to be there. And the rehabilitation process of those things ended long ago. Like, right. they're, they're just places to keep people that you have to keep for a while now and that's it and it just costs us money like right okay I know people can be found not guilty later on evidence being caught and stuff but like why torture a dude by keeping him on death row for so long right yeah like think about it like it's one thing to know okay it's your day it's your you're time. gonna die you're gonna in about 20 years but you're yeah, dying but so it's you're gonna a, sit here yeah. and wait it out why don't the you just fuck? take him out sooner yeah, uh, Florida, they sense. have a uh, Heritage Foundation. You know, they're a, a Republican group. Mm-hmm. And they got together, and then there's a movie about it on Netflix. I can't, I can't remember what it's called. But in Florida, they had 99 people that were on death row. And this Heritage Foundation went in there and started investigating. They found out that a third of them were completely innocent. The evidence was right there. Now, so see, the last two years, they, they've gotten 30% of people on death row in Florida off 
on evidence that was already sitting there. They just didn't want to that like the Kamal Harris thing. They didn't yeah. want to see the evidence. Yeah, they were doing that in Florida. Uh, I can't remember the movie. There was a guy, a kid. He was a a, a four star recruit for football, and he got accused of molesting a, a kid. And they just fucking threw the book at him. Didn't look at evidence, mm. and then finally realized it was the an, another brother who did it. Mm. And they knew it right away. But this guy's <clears throat> life was. They didn't. Fuck, de- they didn't research the but DNA results. They threw results the book enough. at him, and he was done for. And, but the Heritage Foundation oh, yeah. jumped in and saved his life. See, okay, so then there's the flip side. Of but I'm that for coin. death penalty. <laughs> yeah, so, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but there's the flip side of that coin: is how how can you ever justify killing one guy that right. might have <clears throat> turned out to be innocent? And that's the hard thing. But that whole equation, that variable of risk, mm-hmm. can be minimized if you go back and fix the problem that's inherently in hand, which is the justice system itself. Right. That needs to be addressed and fixed. Like with the DNA, if they had researched the DNA m- deeper, they would have been able to look and go, okay, well, you've got a brother. Okay, well, since there's another male in your family, we're going to need a sample of his DNA too so right. that we can draw anybody out because the DNAs are very close. Look at Ancestry. How many cold cases is fucking Ancestry.com fixed right like legit like i know for a fact warrants for arrest have been issued because you went and got your dna DNA. tested to find out who you're related to and then your shit shows up on a database connected to a fucking rape case and it's like well hold on we know that girl didn't do this to this guy 20 years ago but wait wait who are you related to might be who we want to start looking at now because somebody in your family your cousin in prison. They've now narrowed it down to, holy shit, somebody in your immediate family now Did it. might be a main suspect now. That's because crazy. your DNA has now narrowed it down to your family. Yeah. Now it's not a sea of <clears throat> suspects. Now it's we've narrowed it down to a family. That gets real real squirrely real fast. But it, it's like Minority Report. Yeah. You know, crazy. the DNA starts getting involved. They start... Accusing you of shit because beforehand, maybe uh, one of your relatives did something and they feel that genetically your family tree might be more dispensed to that. So now they come and say, okay, well, we need you to be involved in this program now because, well, I've never been in trouble in my life. Yeah, but you could be because your cousin's was, he was a fucking serial killer and you guys are <laughs> all from the same genetic tree. You know what I mean? They start yeah. cutting it down mm-hmm. with bullshit and excuses. Right. It's just, you. The, the, we go back to earlier when you were asking about the freedoms and stuff and I've always asked for you to people, well, what right. f- freedoms do you not feel that you have today that you, tomorrow you feel you don't have? I mean, there's already so many restrictions in placed on you before you're even born. Right. But also, our country you know what I mean? is based on liberty, actually, yeah. not freedom. So liberty and freedom are different. They so are different things. Freedom is not in any of the paperwork. And that's what I was going to say, is that's where people get it really twisted up, too, is they complain about the freedoms that they don't have. Well, it's not... F- freedoms that you're losing yeah. like you can go outside you can Liberty. you can Pursuit speak happens. your mind like you yeah. have the freedom Pursuit to speak your mind yes. we got a right to work yeah exactly yeah. freedom of speech that's all i want i just want a right to work and that's mm-hmm. what i always fought for you know for yeah. everybody you know small businesses they were closed down they were targeted and we if, just want to work if my we customers want to come in and take their chances yeah let me let them we want to make a living that's yeah. all i just want to make a living take care of my family pursue a happiness like ruben said and uh but just, by that, doing so that's it and, and like you created. guys keep repeating, in one of the cleanest areas, you guys are super clean. You clean the mat. It's really conscious. Mm, in, mm-hmm. in, a, in a health fitness and even like a beauty salon area, mm-hmm. those are the areas that people are really actually well, always doing the right thing clean. for the whole time. Yeah. The rest of the world yeah, hasn't fucking stepped up. Gyms are one of the, surprisingly, one of the cleanest fucking places. Gyms are probably cleaner than most hospitals. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, you know? Yeah. Because you guys are so exposed to potentially rolling over on staff in an OG class that you want to make sure those fucking mats are clean and everybody wipes down. Absolutely. Like, we it's... are clean. Yeah. So it's like when we're always sweating every day, we're staying Now watch healthy. watch your ringworm and your, your mat rash numbers drop too. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Everything dropped. I mean, it's unexpected side effect. Nobody yeah. got sick. I mean, there was like a couple of students told me, hey, coach, I was exposed to COVID. So, but they I'm stayed gonna, home. I'm going to stay out of the gym for five days and come back and they came back yeah and they were okay afterwards but they did the respectful thing and they stayed home because they were exposed and then yep. then they people came in back japan with... all the time you see them on subways wearing masks and they're like yeah. oh it must be scary there no it's just that person feels sick yeah and has to still get around mm-hmm. and knows they're going to be close to people and says i'm going to do my part now see this is where i get winky they, I tell people they're doing their part by taking precautions. And then I'll tell people I don't want to wear a mask when I'm outside, if I'm, especially if I'm not in, near anyone. Right. Well, well, why aren't you doing your part? Because that doesn't include me doing my part. Yeah. Well, why aren't you getting your shot? Why aren't you doing your part? Because at the end of the day, I'm lucky enough to be, like we said earlier, in a position to where I'm healthy, I'm young, I'm not immune compromised, any of that stuff, Absolutely. which unfortunately I know people that are. And it sucks. And I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Empathetically and genuinely, I'm sorry that they're in that position, but I don't feel that I should have something injected into my body 
that I don't need. Exactly. That if I keep following the measures that my government's already laid out for health and safety risks of six feet, wear a mask, wash my hands, as long as I'm already doing that and I've managed not to get it, I'm not going to give it to anyone. And most people aren't going to get it by following those same measures that you feel you you flat out told us we're going to prevent us from helping get it anyway. Why do I now need this shot? Which, by the way, you can still get it even after getting the shot. So right. that's kind of – I don't understand what the fuck the point of that. I don't understand that. that is. If somebody came to me and said, hey, Cole, we're going to give you this shot for Ebola, uh, but you might still get Ebola. Then why take so the shot? why the fuck am I taking the shot? Yeah, exactly. So and now I know there's a science. It, it's brass of me to just go, why the fuck? I know there's a science behind it, and there's a reason. It limits your chance of exposure, which limits your chance of getting aseptomatic, which limits your chance of exposing it to somebody else who might die from it because you raised it. I know there's a whole fucking chain of stuff that goes along with it. I get that. Right. But I don't need it to stay alive. No. Nope. But you want me to take something that I know for fact has been killing people. Now, when you look at the numbers of how many people have died versus how many have taken it versus the overall blah, 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 blah. Right. It's really not that dangerous. I get it. My fear isn't out of how dangerous it is. My fear is out of the fact that I now have a government entity telling me that I now have to take something that I'm pretty safe from, knock on wood, that is probably not going to kill me, but you're telling me I have to take a shot because it might kill someone else. No, dude, sorry. No, I'm not buying no. that shit. No. I'm not. I take care of myself. I got my blood work done yesterday, got my results. Everything looks good. Yeah. The only thing I was low on was vitamin Bs. Everything See, else and across the board easy. was perfect. Take some so fucking vitamins. B12 shot, boom. I'm here today. Feeling bro, great. I got a B12 shot in my IV one time after a hard weight cut. <laughs> right. Bro, it was, uh, remember Jorge Ruiz? Mm. He was a wrestling dude. Uh, Sounds real familiar. nice. Real friend. He was with yeah. the gym for a wrestling guy and stuff yeah, for, yeah. Our, for our fight team. Right. Real cool guy. His wife was a nurse and all this stuff. She brought me an IV bag one time and it had like B12 in it, dude. Yeah. Holy shit. I didn't feel crazy. I just felt so good. Like, like, healthy. after, yeah, once I was done with the IV bag yeah. and like the next day when we were hitting pads, getting ready for the fight, I felt good. I Better. felt like not short of breath. Like, yeah. I just felt healthy. Yeah. Because it's just a matter of getting your vitamins, dude. Yeah. It wasn't anything crazy. It was yeah. a simple IV solution and some B12. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm like, you know, I, rem I remember back in the day when I was low on testosterone and low on vitamin Bs. I was still competing. I'm like, how mm -hmm. the fuck am I doing so well still? Yeah. I'm just fucking it's in here. You're just living in the healthy heart. and just going. Drive. Yeah. It's drive. It's a big of it. My big part of it's drive. Yeah, it's, it's drive. a lot of times people don't want it bad enough. So yeah, but yeah, dude, with the whole shot thing, I mean, yeah, okay. So like, if it came down to it, and this is where it really sucks because it really came down to it, at the end of the day, we all want to feed our family. Yeah, and I'm not. We're not all in a position like yourself. Right. Excuse me. We're not all in a position like ourselves where right. we have our own business. Right. Some of us, unfortunately, we are at the position of relying on somebody else right. to pay us for the work we do. Right. So at some point, there may be a turning point where they come to you and say, hey, if you want to keep your job, you're going to have to get the shot. Right. And then that becomes a decision factor. Do I want to stand by yeah. my principles and my morals and my beliefs? Or, or, and it's not even me, it's I'm now being put in a position to where I have to yeah. choose between my morals and beliefs, not pride. This isn't swallowing pride and just doing it because it needs to be done. This is now, you're making me go against my beliefs and my principles of what I stand for, right. my inner feeling of where I'm against this, or feed my family. Right. Now, you're put in that similar position of, do I keep my doors open and right. feed my family, or close them and follow the, the rule of law right now, or do I feed my family? Yeah. And you chose, I feed my family. I fed my family. Exactly. So now the rest I of us, my family, I'm like, and a lot of people are being put in a position to yeah. where it's either get this shot that you know mm -hmm. for a fact people are dying from. It's a fact. It's not like they're getting it and not dying. Mm -hmm. They're getting it and they're fucking dying. This right. Is wait, 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 wait. Who? Hmm? Who? Can, Do I know anyone specifically? No, no. Like, from it? No. Can you, because no one's dying because you. Can, that's one thing that will get us wiped out because that's not dying because we'll look that up. I'm, I'm big into this. The reason why they want you to take the vaccine, there's two reasons. Because you're a conduit. Because you're so healthy, mm. that you'll get it, and you'll give it to someone else and not know about That's it. That's where the so, But my plan when it comes to vaccine, about, yeah. I'll take away the, the vaccine completely. But if you're against the vaccine, mm. will you now stand up and say that I'm not for getting rid of government regulation, you know, government mm. um, operation warp speed that pushed this, mm. that allowed this to happen to let testing on humans because that's the Republican stance is we want to get rid of government red tape. Mm. Gov so that's what they did is they got rid of government regulations to push this on people because it hasn't been tested. Even mm. though this, this, this actually the MRA vaccine is 10 years. It was created in Turkey. It's like not even our uh, thing. Mm. We use the technology here. But so are we now going to take a stance and say, we're not going to let you cut red tape because what you do are trying to hurt us. And mm. the Democrats always said this on the first place. No, 
don't test that on humans. We're not for that. And then Trump's like, no, we're getting rid of red tape mm. and we're going to push this vaccine forward because this is going to be my biggest, biggest. It's uh, going to be my legacy. Kind my of legacy. Thing That's my why presidency. he's so mad yeah. people aren't taking it. You yeah. know, so, but when they take the vaccine, it, it, there are like, say, 92% effective. Mm. That means that now you only have an 8% chance of getting it. And then the likelihood of you getting it extremely bad is has dropped. dropped Before you, you have a 100% chance of getting it. Hmm. It's like anything else, you have a hundred percent chance of getting. It. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. No, take yeah, it, and that's why I said it. But I've I just want—I always try to say it hand in hand. So if you're against the vaccine, you have to be against now, Operation see, Warp Speed. That's where the that's where the lies. I'm not necessarily against the vaccine. Like if you wanted to get it or he wanted, to, my daughter got it. Yeah, my whole like, family has it. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. hey, my daughter got it, and I was like, okay, cool. How do you feel? Just yeah. kind of keep an eye on it because I heard people. It kind of knocks some people down. Just yeah, you if, know, if, keep it, it depends if, if you, you had it before or not. Yeah, there's a difference of how it'll affect you <clears> versus <throat> if you've been exposed to it or not before, or if it's a brand new introduction into your body. And I'm not against. I'm never. Here's the thing. I've never told anybody don't get it. Yeah, yeah. If you want to get it, bro, 100. By yeah. all means, get it. It's just not something that I've, I've, and this is where this is where you got to put your tinfoil hat on to follow me a little bit because I've seen what our own government has done to our own citizens. Uh, take the Tuskegee thing, take the... That's why I'm saying Operation Warp Speed. So, so I'm it's saying like, if you're against the vaccines, you have to be against that too. You can't say... I'm against the concept you, of having to be forced to take something that I already know how our citizenship has been treated by our government when giving them injections. Well, that's, like, I've that's already seen Operation Warp, Warp Speed pushed the government to put injections then, in yeah, our Yeah, at the end of the day, and I'd so be that, comfortable that, saying that, that I'm oper- against it. Yeah. So we're against those Trump policies and we need to stand up. But when people can't do that... Now you're showing a bias mm. because you're not you're not really now you're making a political bias because now you think the vaccine is actually Democrat when it was based in Trump's policies. The whole just, Trump party did it. The Republicans the ran it. Forcefulness of it. You so know what I'm mean? saying? Well, it's not forced. It's, it's it's chosen. But remember, Trump's the mm. one who came out. If you look up right now, I can look around. Right Trump made a speech. Everybody go get that vaccine. I am requiring everybody to get that. And, and that's where the force financial it. part comes in. Like all those were probably bought and paid for because those companies didn't make those for oh, yeah, free. Oh yeah, we paid for them. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's paid but, for already. The contract was written. It's paid but who? For, so yeah, exactly. It. So who else away has, the who sells, have to? The the end debate would be who stands to financially gain from all those being sold. Yeah, I think what it comes down to is who's the other connected thing to the money like, being made. OSHA, OSHA right now is trying to make you wear a mask on job sites. I'm an electrician, so, yeah. so ever since we wore a mask, nobody gets sick, you know. And mm-hmm. then also silicon in the dirt, and there's so many lawsuits from insurance and people with chest problems because mm-hmm. of job sites, old jobs or new mm-hmm. jobs. That's the biggest problem on the job Debris site. Debris in the air. Debris in the air. Like so now OSHA is like, oh man, and uh, OSHA, sorry, OSHA is ran by insurance companies. Their mm-hmm. insurance companies like, man, we've saved. Billions, so much money by billions having this, of dollars yeah. to wear these masks. Lung so we're going to make it mandatory on job sites to wear masks. And everybody else is like, oh my God, they're making Like, no, they realize a cause and effect. You oh, know? yeah. And then in Japan or China, why they don't wear masks? Why they wear masks? They don't have insurance. So if they get sick, they die. Yeah, and they don't that, have any kids to live on. Yeah, and they don't want to give it to their neighbor. Well, they, they, don't, don't have, they only have one kid. Now they can have three kids, but they only had <laughs> one kid. You know, mm-hmm. um, so like really restricted for a while. So they were really restricted. If that one person died, you're lean. Yeah, you're really shorthanded. Died. Your whole yeah. family died. So they're like, we're gonna do everything possible to make sure that this one family lineage can mm-hmm. live. Because one old person dies, the family. Yeah. Died. Then I mean, there I guess to answer your question. And yeah, <laughs> I'd I'd have to. It's it's kind of a hard spot to go because you got to kind of pick a whole broad spectrum that you're against. So it's like yeah, I'm not it's really hard. against it. I just I won't personally be getting it. And more so, here's the thing. Biden came in and said he wants to see a 70% reached vaccine rate, right? Yeah. Herd immunity. Herd immunity, right? Herd immunity so, is when people get vaccinated, not exactly just exactly. around. So, they have to get sick or vaccinated. My question is, if he if we don't hit that 70% mark that he set, what happens? Well, no, they can't do anything. There's nothing they can do. Now, see here, we say they can't, but the last year showed us that they can do a fucking lot. <laughs> well, they, do you know what I'm saying? Well, like they, they really can't. They really can't do anything. One, how do you hurt, hurt people up and give them shots in the first place? But like, but also, you, I agree with you. you hurt people what up they and could do is just I mean, start shooting chemtrails, right? No, yeah, that's an that's another fucking thing entirely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. deep into it now. That's that's you. We're opening the rabbit hole like just a gaping ending. But they ending figure void. if you, if you get yeah. sixty or seventy percent to get the shot. The rest then of the people yeah, who don't get it, you create, you will immunity. get sick eventually, and well, then yeah. that and that's how the herd immunity is going to hopefully. But like get I said, up. it's I've gotten the flu before. It's just a, I mean, my perspective is just a bad flu. Granted, yeah, people are dying from it, but again, those are particular groups that are at either immune immune compromised things like that, yeah. pre-existing overweight. reasons, overweight, yeah. out of shape. I feel that, like I said, I'm lucky to be in an area group where I, if I catch it, I'm probably going to be fine. Yeah, so it's funny. So, so I always point out, like when um, remember. 
Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was the um, health fitness guru, mm-hmm. and they got rid of him because he thought it was, you know, this is some Nazi bullshit. And then Michelle Obama went in there, she's like, "Look, we need to cut back on sodas and our food intake. We need oh, to be yeah. a healthier society." And they're like, "Fuck this Nazi ass bitch," you know? Yeah. Well, look and at the so, school food. Look so at the food. They totally mm-hmm. try to change the food. They said, "Let's get better food." And they're like, "What are you going to try to control our? Like, what are you doing? We're going to live our own lifestyle. We're wild and free." <laughs> yeah. And now they're like, "Why doesn't the government tell us to be healthy? Why aren't you feeding why us right? <laughs> why, don't, why don't they tell us to be healthy? Like, no, we told you. You called us Nazis. Idiocracy." Yeah. Yep. Remember that fucking movie? I tell everybody about it. We <laughs> are living idiocracy right now. Hey, we just we just kicked out Macho Camacho out of the presidency. Yeah, Donald we, Trump yeah, was, we just got rid of Camacho. We ran idiocracy. <laughs> right? Fuck. Right? It, yeah, because it has full of electrolytes. I'm just saying, man. It, and that's the problem is it's there's so many the, – the, the amount of people who will just listen to whatever Uncle Sam tells them now yeah. is vastly outweighing those that think for themselves Well, now. I point out two things that would always catch people off guard. Um, St. Clair Media – is mm. the number one media company in, in America. They're, they own four out of every five yeah. televisions. The, that's the company that owns Fox News. So Fox News is in four out of every five TVs in America, making them mm. the main streaming of media. But all they do is try to tell you the people who only stream 10% of the media is the majority of it, which is not true. Yeah. The other one is Chicago. Chicago has never been the top 10 in gun homicides in our whole fucking life. No, of course not. It's, but they'll tell you Chicago's number one. But number one has always been fucking New Orleans. Yeah, they get and bring him Alabama, man. Arkansas, all the places where you can have more guns. There's low money. It's narrative driven. So narrative they lie to you, media. and then we believe it. And everybody's like, Chicago's well, violent. It's not even top ten. It's not even really lies. It's narrative driven media. Yeah, not even top ten. Well, let's tell you, it's the most violent Fear. place, but yeah. not Fear even mongers. top ten. Yeah. And what they're saying, the person who is in control of the media is St. <clears throat> Clair Media. Mm. They're in four out of every five homes. So that means four out of every five people have the same information mm. from this group, and only one has different. Yeah. So you've built, you've again, so St. Clair Media, who owns Fox News, has been lying about this shit forever, and people just repeat Chicago, and they'll keep repeating mainstream media, even though because we love catchphrases, we like big butts, we can't lie, you know, we love uh, fucking all the catchphrases, lock her up, I'm loving it, you know, and all I the bullshit, I'm lie. loving yeah. it, we love those yeah. fucking catchphrases, and so anytime someone hears it, it doesn't matter what it is, right? I'm on an old town road, right? Yeah. Everybody sang that song until a year later, then I realized, oh my god, he's talking about fucking a dude, <laughs> you know, and then they're, they're already locked into it you know what I mean oh. it's already in your head already, already oh. in. our whole family danced to it right now I have questions yeah. about yeah. myself start deleting yeah, that video you're like fuck that yeah so but we, yeah it's we it's, need to be aware and stop you recheck it. yourself and shit it's <laughs> all dividable information they yeah. want you to have a difference of opinion and feel like I tell him they want you to feel so strongly about the opinion that's been fed to you married to it that you will fucking violently you act on to it these ideas you know no. I was say I was talking about um, Jerry Dyer he was married to this idea of, and it doesn't matter what you, your stance is about the gay pride thing, mm. but he went to a group, listened to the group talk, and then changed his point of view. And I was like, fuck, I'm on that guy's th- side now. I've never heard a politician listening to a group and then changing his... Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that article. There's an article they say that like Sacramento bullied him. It's like, no, he just listened to both sides he, and he said... Went, yeah, he hmm. went to a pride... Com- he uh, did an interview on Cam J, and he was crying. He's like, man, these people... This lady, the professor, was kicked out of her home at 15 because she's told her family she was you know, mm-hmm. a gay lesbian. Like, the stories I heard, I've changed my life. That's it. You're part of my community. I'm not going to kick you off the table. We're inviting everybody to the table in our community. Mm-hmm. Positive group. So... Th- that change was amazing. Well, yeah, because, he wasn't well, married to an idea. Because you got yeah. a guy that was now granted everybody's view on his law enforcement career, or not is is going to be divided. But uh, you got a guy that who his whole job was to find ways to include every different aspect of minority and nationality and group and culture in the city because he knew that if he didn't find some way to make them all congruently work, he'd have war going on, like chaos all the time. So he had to find ways to understand all these different groups to make it work within the different communities. So that makes sense that I can see him going and listening to their side and their viewpoint and their actual perspective and what their really goal is. He wasn't so married to this ideal party line yeah. or even his own personal but he's like you know what i listen to you guys and let's do that <clears throat> now, mm. I, and I, at that point on then i actually put a posted a video i called the radio station i'm like i'm on board whatever this guy's doing i mean plus it doesn't hurt getting on the good side right now this this month of of being a new mayor to a town i mean it doesn't hurt to get those wheels yeah. like yeah. of support going and he's got a major up, area in town that's of that community the yeah. and then after sup all the people fairness the air goes out and they give up they give yeah. up on the fight. Like, what are you fighting for? And people are like, I'm gonna go back home. Yeah. You know? Like, where are we at on that church thing? Where are we at on Tower Theater? They gotta get. They can't have that. Because so once they put a church in there, the whole area is. I thought they for already church. like were advertising that they were holding, like, uh, what do they call them? Um, 
open ceremonies, open worship. What what, yeah. what do we call when when uh, they can use uh, the area, but they're not going to let them own it because they own it and they zone it to a church area. All those bars close. They're going to have marijuana that areas was down be there. My next question, I'd have to ask a zoning lawyer or a contract lawyer about that because I don't know if you can change pre-existing grandfathered in contracts of business that I bought this business and entered into a long-term contract with the city on the presence that I could serve alcohol in this location because I bought it here because it was zoned for that. Now that would give me a grandfather clause type contract we'll to have them say they can't rezone in. it. So, but that's what I'm saying is the grandfather part of their contract might prevent our rezoning because you now have several businesses that the city relies on for business revenue yeah. and tax revenue that they kind of have a legal contract with them that said, look, we have a 10-year contract with you. We still have four years on our contract yeah. that we bought this because it was zoned this way. So what they do is they you gentrify can't change it. the zoning. So they, they go there and they put the church up mm. and then they start turning that area into an area that people don't want to go to drink no more. Well, true. Yeah. They and will, then also the new marijuana yeah. and bars that want to open up down there, they don't let them have contracts. They end it. Because that's where they're going to yeah. zone a lot of the marijuana Well, that one's, go, the first, one's going in over on, what, Ashland by Granite Park, and then one's going in on, what, Kings Canyon. I, I know those are two of the first ones that are going in. seven. Is there going to be seven? They're only going to give seven out. Fuck. Well, I mean, at least, well, that means competitive market, at least. You've only got seven places that you can get Well, there's from. there's farmer markets every day of the week. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, people want to get it, let's get it going on. And those places yeah, are all the safest, nicest places. I know a guy that just opened like a 70 acre uh, dispensary fulfillment farm in like Mendota. Yeah. Like it's, it's whole existence is to far, it's to supply dispensaries. It's yeah. its whole existence. So I'm going to back out of this a little bit. <laughs> 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 so, every, but yeah, every, so everybody loves green in California, man. Well, I it's, mean, it's, it's legal become and it's crazy and it's, it's, it's become it's a cool. new stock market ticker. It's it, okay. So here's the thing. Remember when cigarettes were super legal out cigarettes the gate? Cigarettes suck, yeah. There was a fucking sign on it that said, this shit will kill you. Right. And Uncle Sam was like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. We're even going to allow little kitty cigarettes. It's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Why? Because they were making money. Because tobacco can only be grown in climates. You can only grow tobacco in certain parts of the world. It, right. That's just the fucking way it is. It's a climate-controlled right. product. So right. Uncle Sam, just like heroin, just like opium, <clears throat> all this shit that's climate-controlled that you can't just grow in your closet now bring in Uncle Green Thumb, you can grow that shit anywhere. You can yeah. grow it in a fucking shoebox in your closet under a pile of clothes if you have the right settings. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so Uncle Sam couldn't control it, couldn't yeah. make money off it. Now, Maybe. fast forward to 2020, That's you've now uh, Uncle Sam has now been convinced by the masses and the legislative, the people that they listen to, that, hey, there's a lot of fucking money to be made here. And Colorado Absolutely. were the first ones out the gate, and they said, look at this. We generated how much fucking millions of dollars in year one? Right. We opened, like, multiple schools, shit like that. Like, they showed that there's a resource of revenue there. Right. So now that Uncle Sam's like, oh, well, we'll just find a way to make money off of it. Now that we found a way to make money off of it, we can control it. The control aspect is only from a financial standpoint. They can tax it. They can make money off it. The control stands from a I can grow it anywhere I want thing still exists. Right. You know, it's like with Smart. guns. Oh, I'm a felon. I can't get a gun. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Johnny Blow over here with a trunk full of AR-15s and fucking pistols and six shooters can hook you up. Yeah. Oh, you want an Uzi? There's an Uzi. Oh, you want some guns that were in the confiscation lockup? Oh, we got those too. Right. Like what? They got it all. Yeah. What is what is? Everything's accessible. Dude, everything. Everything. So I don't for know anybody. how. <laughs> for anybody. Now, does that mean I want no rules, no background, no check and balances? No, fuck no. I don't want every Johnny crazy to have a fucking gun. No. But making it harder for you and me to have firepower that a protects our home and b is equal to that and of our government, so right. that we may fight a Second tyrannical Amendment. government. Just because the day that the shit ever hits the fan and Uncle Sam comes knocking on your door. No longer of a legal standpoint, right? Because because somebody wanted too much power, you have to at least be able. To, now, granted, they're gonna go, dude. You having a bunch of AR-15s ain't gonna stop a fucking Bradley. I get that. It's not gonna stop a fucking Panzer Shrek either. But when the soldiers in the boots go down the street again, this is just an if. I'm not saying it's going to. I don't think it will. But if that shit storm ever hit. You don't want to be having pistols and shotguns against dudes in Kevlar and army helmets with fucking AR-15s and shit. You're right. going to be at a severe disadvantage of protecting your ability to exist. So at the end of the day, bad guys have AK-47s. Bad guys have AR-15s. Bad guys have fucking rocket launchers. They have it all. So why should I be restricted to a pistol or a shotgun in order to protect my home on the day that comes when they come in? Everybody should have a right to bear arms and protect themselves. That's it. I'm not going to do something stupid. Yeah. I'm not. But you're making it so hard for me to just feel like I can protect my family. Right. That it's okay. And the chances are that it never happens. I'd probably grow and die of old age and my home never gets invaded. That nightmare scenario never happens, thank God, because in that nightmare scenario, the chance of one of my loved ones dying happens. 
Right. I don't want that scenario. I'm not a guy that hoards guns hoping for the day that I hear the window break at two in the morning. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want that to happen because there's a good chance I'm going to get shot. Right. Because I'm first through that door. I'm going to get shot. You got to stay ready. Okay? I don't want to be in that scenario. I just don't want to be. No. We but gotta... I feel that if the condoms, I'm on a date. I might not need it, but I want to make sure I have it. Right. Versus her getting all hot and bothered and going, do you have a protection to me? Going, uh, no, can I go to the liquor store quick? No, bro. That just kicked in my window at 2 o'clock in the morning. No, you can't go upstairs and get your shotgun out of the safe in your room first. No, no. Yeah. You're dead. Yeah. So... I don't know. I, yeah. The criminals get all the fun guns. I, I should be Got allowed it. to have the fun guns, too. I need yeah. equal firepower to protect myself. I'm not uh, going to use a... Absolutely, because a criminal's going to come in with some ARs yeah. or something, and you got to be ready to, you know... They're going to have fully automatic weapons. What yeah. am I going to have? A semi-automatic fucking twenty two yeah. rifle? Um, what, are you going to have a twenty five? Yeah. Handgun? I, got a, and... I get a 9 millimeter. Thanks, Uncle Sam. You got I two, feel safe. You got two crazy ex-prison inmates in your house with who, just, who with aren't going ARs, back to prison and they don't, and they don't care shit, if they die trying to kill your family you better yeah. be ready to protect yourself they're not there to rob you equal firepower exactly because at the end of the day dude if you come in my house and people always say oh it's just stuff it is just stuff right but if you come through my door i'm going to assume that you're there for more than just stuff and that yeah. you won't end it. how am i going to know that you're going to end at my stuff no one what if you be see my wife anyway. or you see my daughter yeah. and then you decide, well, you want that too? Yeah, it's um, too late now for me. Yeah, if you're standing in your house, a man shouldn't even be in there. No, yeah, exactly. Like, Who the fuck are a, you? A what man are you doing in my house, motherfucker. Let alone a man with ill intent. Oh yeah, but why is he in there though? Yeah, you're like, who the fuck are now, you? Now, granted, you get some lost drunk guy. Yeah, but you but, get a, but nine times out of ten, it's a dude that's there with ill intent. I got screen doors, all kinds of shit. How'd yeah. you get through that? How'd you shit? get? You came in on purpose. Um, are you gonna get it now? Now it's I got a rock. Get, get him. Get him. I got him. So I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> right. I mean, and if not, if I go down that path of okay, you know, right. the people who don't want me to have guns, what should I do? Should I put bear traps outside my door? Should I start going fucking Cauley McCulkin and going home alone on my house? Do I build a fucking Fuck jigsaw that. style puzzle house? We got to stay like, ready. We got to be able to protect ourselves and our family. And you know, that's it. And that's all. And that's, that's all, we all wanted... we're asking for that's when it. we make these stance in the line of. We should be allowed to bear the same amount of oppressive firearm that comes from either, be it our own government or the dude down the street at 7-Eleven who decides he wants to take my car. Right. Now, granted, you want to take my car, gunpoint, chances are you're probably getting the car. Right. It's a car. Mm -hmm. Have it. You clearly need it right now more than I do, bro. Can right. I get my kid out the back seat? Right. Thank you. Have a nice day. Exactly. I'm not going to try to fucking quick you. Even if I got a gun, that doesn't mean I'm going to try to quit. I'm going to evaluate the scenario. Not every scenario says shoot your way out. So right. I started blasting. No, not every scenario yeah, says yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. There's so many times where I can think of scenario lines where people had a gun on them and by pulling it out, exasperated the scenario into something worse. Right. And that's where you get the, the philosophy a lot of people with the defund the police thing. They're like sending a guy to a scenario where you have a mentally ill person who's mentally ill, they're, they're Asperger's, autism, whatever it is, and a dude with a gun who already maybe five times today has had to deal with just dirt scumbag pieces of yeah. shit. Right. Two of them tried to fucking stab him already today and it's yeah. fucking Tuesday. And now he's got your son who is going fucking bananas you don't know he's got autism. You don't know he's mentally disabled. You don't. They do, right. but they're already yelling because the situation is hysterical, and he's got a big old fucking butcher knife in his it's hand. It's out of control. Because the pie, he dropped the pie. Yeah, and he's just pissed off for no yeah. reason. You know, yeah. it's like, at the end of the day, hit that fucking guy with a beanbag gun. Yeah. Bean. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Hit him with if a you have, if, and this is, Stun again, him. split, I got Stun gun. Boy a, fucking, a, a boy fucking, beanbag gun. Split Bam. second decisions, lifetime to evaluate it. But there are a lot of scenarios where if you were in better shape, if you knew how to fight, you get tackled. You don't know how to defend yourselves. Now you're panicking. You're going for your gun. Right. You're scared. Your life is about to be at risk. You got to go or he's going for it. Right. Well, because you can more of that motherfucker when he goes for your gun. Yeah. You fucking just fucking arm lock that bitch. But it, you, you know what I mean? And that's where I feel a lot of those things happen, too, is guys that are ill properly trained. Right. They start reaching for the weapons that they know they're trained for. No, dude, you need to be trained on how to meet hands with hands first. And then if you're losing that battle, start going up the list. I think one of the biggest no. problems is, is, in general, we are, uh, all of us together, are just, we're all the same. So uh, cops, doctors, we're all equal, right? Mm -hmm. So the same equal group is lazy. So when we get to do our job, we're going to do our job lazy. Just like if you're doing jujitsu, like, man, you didn't do that shrimp roll like you should have. Mm -hmm. You went weak on that. That's why you didn't fucking do it. You know? That's so why you're like, not getting better. People are just lazy. So people are going to do their job lazy. And so instead of actually doing the right thing, like, because what you're saying, that takes some, that takes a, a good, great guy, you yeah. know, a hardworking guy, and then a brave, 
person. I wouldn't say guy. Dad, and and that's so like the other person's like, yeah. okay, I went here for a suicide guy. Well, here, boom, I, I helped you out. Well, okay, you so suicide. But now when you bring up that whole sense of what's required for itself, at the end of the day, and this is I, I support good cops. Yeah, I will put that. I support yeah, good absolutely, cops. Absolutely, absolutely. Period. There's yeah. bad cops. Period. There's also bad fucking pilots too. So bad let's people. get that out there too. There's bad people everywhere. But right. if if they're being put to that choice at the same time, and they're right, they asked to be there. Every person who has a badge and a vest on didn't take the job because it was a job or yeah. they needed a job. It's you sign up for that. You, I spent six months in the academy. They drill that in your head for six months at least. That is one of the messages that they drill home. This job will get you killed. If that is not your cup of tea, there's the door. No judgment. This isn't for everybody. Dude, we lost like almost half of our class the first week oh, yeah. because they were dramming that home. They're like, the first thing you need to understand is some of you may die on this job. Period. Period. Yeah. Just period. If you can't accept I, I, I'm that. I'm an electrician. I'm top so, 10. Cops have <clears throat> never been top 10, but I've, but I've you been can get electrocuted to death. All the time. Yeah. We're top 10. We, we used to be number one. One would die every fucking day. Miscommunication. Somebody turns the power so back I, I on. I know a lot of people get hurt and injured. So, I've been shocked a lot too. I'm an AC contractor. And yeah. When I've it's that shocked. risk. You get too comfortable. Top 10. Yeah. They kind of chose that risk. I never really look at cops and go, oh man, that guy got complacent because he's lazy as his job. If he if he got lazy, it's because he got complacent because he started taking the job for granted and the dangers and the risks involved with it. And you can see it on their weight. And, you, and that's the thing too. Dude. They have things like now. Uh, we'll give you free burgers for your vaccines. We'll give you free this. I whatever know, the joke ice is, right? Cream and everything. Dude, it got to a point to where they were giving you bonuses in your pay for staying in shape as a cop. It was like a bonus. We will pay you to stay in shape. Now, granted, yeah, I get it. You want to pay those that are doing it, but, the, but yeah. shouldn't you already? Shouldn't be you in already? Shape. You yeah. shouldn't be benefited. Give him more money for having a degree. Give him more money for being smarter. Utilizing better resources on de-escalation tactics. Taking taking programs, taking courses. Like the teacher's program. Shit yeah. like that, yeah. Um, volunteering for FTO programs, wanting to improve yourself. Learning de-escalation tactics, like going to a seminar and this shit. Those are the things that cops should be paid more for. Those are the, those also, are the resources. Sign right, yourself right. up to a drug testing program because as a cop, you test it as you hire, mm-hmm. but you could be on steroids and there then is, go to work uh, there is an and you don't get tested too? again until the very end or until you get busted or ever until ever yeah. so there should be if you sign yourself up to a program or you'd be mandatory to because i'm mandatory i'll mm-hmm. get the drug tested 10 times a year yeah for you your know? contractor's license and stuff for, oh, yeah. for every job i go to new test new test and sometimes they just do random and now see there's the thing is so many jobs don't do that that you should have only very union specific. jobs do non-union jobs don't but union jobs do and that's because of the insurance well insurance and because the, what we offer is Better workers, healthier workers, safer better pay, workers, all this better shit. insurance and everything. So that's why we're tested. Well, yeah, because you, know? you want to be able to say, look, this is why. Yeah. But this is why. This is the catch. This prove is it. why we're that way. Yeah. We can give you paperwork. Exactly. Yeah. We'll, pay, we'll pay you a lot more. The benefits yeah. will be better. So, uh, there's a lot of things we can do in our police department, and you're, you're right on board with oh, all those things. Yeah, there's you know, tons and, of And shit. also, like you're saying, there should be also not just a, an aggressive police force, but a a psychological police force when you send some people to out to a psychological situation it could be or hand in hand also yeah. hire people in that community to work that community like how many times you send a white guy in North Clovis to go work in Fresno mm. but besides the job they already don't like each other they're south of Herndon how many people say that? I don't yeah. go south of Hernan, south of Shaw. And I can see that, yeah. So there's then, already a divisiveness. Here in town, and we set our communities up separate, like the city council had a meeting. They try to separate the communities different to try to, to keep the communities separate, and then that, yeah. at much, they argue. Under the guise that they would get along better because it's their own community and culture. They think they would build like up, that. but really what yeah. it does is it sets a camaraderie. It's just massive separation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong. Like I said, having spent my time in, and again, this is, I speak from a lame standpoint. I've never been in law enforcement. Um, I don't know the day-to-day struggles. I know I have an idea because you a lot of friends it, that are, but I understand the job and how, what it entails and the right. pressures and the positions they're put in. So, but th- it's the same day. It's just like, I don't know, man. Like there's, there's, a, there's bad apples everywhere. Right. I and, think all cops should be able to, I think they should require a blue belt. I think that would help their something, more something company. along yeah. the lines yeah. of showing consistent training. Yeah. Like here's the thing: you have they have to qualify all the time for their firearm, right? They have to right. show that they can competently and safely use their firearm yeah. constantly, right? We have four mm-hmm. shooting ranges here in town, right? So, yeah, dude, a minimum that are even in town, not even talking the mountains yeah. and stuff. So why don't they have to show competency in hand-to-hand combats, control techniques? Better, better right. techniques, less de escalation tactics. Yeah, that is the kind of thing that I would like to see the change. But again, it has to come from I think way farther back the food chain than people are looking at it. People want to change yep. cops. No, you got to change the training parameters. Right. You got to change how they're trained, the, also, the, how the they unions, start. Like I'm a union guy, but their unions got so strong. 
sometimes they break rules and stuff. You can't get rid of them, or they mm. don't get. Or like in Fresno, like say the top of the police department, um, we have five million dollars in debt from lawsuits just mm. last year alone, and before that, it's three million every year for the last fifteen years. Mm. That comes out of our taxes. Mm. It should come out of that guy's pension, and that's not, not out of my money. That's where the um, I already paid you. What is it? The uh, qualified immunity yeah. uh, removal is where they're, they're buying for you know, it. So you know, if you kill somebody, you're a human. We're all humans. And that and that now. See, here's the thing: if you're in the right. You're in the right. A policy like that requires a lot of massive policy change. Interior first, like how do you now handle car chases? What if I've got a felon, a three strike felon with a gun, and they've got a kidnapping victim in the back seat, and they are fleeing? Like, what do you do? You've got to catch them, right? You can't let them get away. That person will die. But now what happens if some some dude blows his red light and I T-bone him while we're in, in pursuit of this guy and I kill him because he ran a red light, but I killed him while chasing this yeah, guy. Yeah, we're breaking it down where, statistically. But now I'm saying How is far where do you go? does it go? Exactly. So, There's a lot of stuff that has to change, I, I think, think before. I think technology would be good. Like you're talking about beanbags and we, we realized during the riots, I guess these cops had rubber bullets. Yeah. Put four rubber bullets and then put all bullets. You know, if you knew every cop had four rubber bullets, you're <clears> like, okay, I'm going to get jacked up here. But after yeah. that, start counting sucks. shots. I'm, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, gonna die. Boom, oh, I mean, that's one. and then but then the cop be like, "Hey, check this out, foo. Boom, lay down. <laughs> you know." And, and, and that's the thing yeah. is, you got. But again, you got to. I've seen people take rubber bullets and beanbags yeah. to the face. It'll fuck you yeah. up. Or shoot a no, car no. with a like you can't shoot with some kind of jail that tracks it right away. We have helicopters, there, yeah, like a drones, GPS so tracker. So many fucking things we could do. You now could, I mean, it sounds Batmany, but dude, you have a. It shoots a tracker. Clovis sh- has a camera in every intersection. If you get busted in Clovis, they follow you oh, yeah. around. They now, know granted, you know. you're looking at a population density too. Fresno has over what five hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand. Fifth largest population in California. Yeah, Clovis has like what one hundred fifty. Yeah. yeah, on a good day. Yeah, yeah. on big hat days. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> speaking of no, yeah. um, but, they have the yeah, uh, in so. Fresno. They have the um the <laughs> gun one. So they have microphones all over downtown Fresno. Yeah, yeah. It would tell. It would rate uh, the decibel level. Yeah. Of the so fire when that and guy got shot from PG E, the cops were there in like a minute and yeah. 30 seconds which is amazing well because the response time to a known gunshot now they know it's a gunshot it now, exactly where it was yeah. at Pinpoint. exactly like go for that i'm down for that so and people I, I was all for that and they did something similar again i keep bringing it up but it's a good uh, example when we were in the academy they took us into some of the communities and said here is the problem we're having with this community here is the problem we're running into go like they wanted us with like the half an academy training that we had had and the thought process that they started molding our brains to start thinking and how we evaluate Outside things. Outside the box. Yeah, they were like, look, we need some fresh eyes. What do you guys think? What problem do you see here and how would you address it? Dude, two of the cadets came up with, with fixes that are in use today in that area. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit, how did they not think of that sooner? It's just they've been looking at it for so long and they were looking at some of the problems that were coming from the area and they were, again, Fresno Fresno PD is a bad example sometimes because they are in a very responsive type setting. You go on for your call, your, your service call or whatever and you've got such a backlog of calls for service from the previous shift that you can't even start addressing stuff that's happening right now. So you can't even really police anything. You're busy driving from call to call on backlogs. Clovis PD, on the other hand, now a lot of people, I understand their views on Clovis PD and the it's a way of life and good old boys and all this shit. I get it. It's a cowboy town. That's just fucking it. But they have a very proactive approach, and they can because they've built that law enforcement presence to such a degree that now it's like, we kind of do go out looking for problems because the dude standing in front of the shell station at two o'clock in the morning on Saturday night looking kind of strange stands out because they're closed. They've been closed since ten, mm-hmm. you know. Or the guy wandering through the Walmart parking lot at two or three in the morning with a fucking long rifle, you know what I <laughs> yeah. mean? Like, there's all kinds right, of scenarios. Right. And I, I heard that go down. I live closer. I heard <clears throat> that go down. I was like, what the fuck was that? Wow. And I heard all the <clears throat> sirens and stuff. And I was like, oh, dude, something bad just happened. And then the next morning, I saw it fucking, I was, dude got shot. And I'm like, but then you look at those scenarios and I've seen the body cam footage. And again, seconds to decide, split seconds, milliseconds, months to look at and evaluate because we get the boy of replay now. But some of those scenarios you got to look at and go, as long as they were standing there, why didn't somebody just go, bing, bang, bing, bang, bing, bang, boom, boom, boom. Like, why did it come down to... Dylan Noble. The, right. Yeah, now that, that yeah, see, was that was a bad he scenario got, he too. Was on the ground, got shot with a shotgun twice while yeah. laying on the ground yeah. when they had dogs and people surrounding him. And the thing yeah. is, though, I can see if there was active fire going on and there was other shooters or something, and it's like, dude, you cannot breach that right now. Get, get Evaluate him and put him down. But there wasn't. It was one guy... 
he did something Daylight, stupid. He acted like he had a gun. Yeah, he, he did something stupid, and then that's where that should have stopped. He like, needed a hero. That guy really needed a hero to save his life. Yeah, you know? no, and it makes sense. It's just you again. You have to look at all the things they're responding to a call of somebody with a with a long rifle in their truck. Yeah, he came flying around the corner. <laughs> And just take it off, and they're like, that matches the description, light them up. Like, they thought they just lucked out, and the guy came across their fucking plate, is what happened. But then that all went south. It all went south. It turned real bad real fast, and then it's like, now you have panic combined with dog-style, Pavlovsky-like trained procedures of, he's reaching, he's reaching, he's reaching. Yeah. But it's like, dude, like... And unfortunately for the cop, they had no other... They, they don't have any other resources except for that And it's gun. hard. They need, they need another resource that, that doesn't make a, a finale. Yeah. An and that's where Rather gets, than a taser, which is really hard to hit someone with a fucking... And there's dart. a lot of ways those fail, too. A lot yeah, of times the, you see the taser fail because it wasn't properly deployed. Yeah. Both doors didn't open, so both prongs didn't go out. One prong hit his jeans and one prong hit him. That's not enough. Like, all kinds of reasons, which now it's like, fuck, now you have a fail. Or, they could have, or like they had, what they had, like, two guys with, you know, two guys in every truck car. One guy had all rubber bullets. The other guy had main bullets. He's like, look, I'm your backup. And you light that guy up, and if this rubber bullets don't happen... I'll back you up, you know. Yeah, and I agree. I don't know. Point to where it's, you, it's, I'm nobody. But again, you know? well, no, it's not that you're nobody. It's that we. These are all awesome ideas. Don't get me wrong. These yeah. are all actually executable ideas. These all make sense. But the problem is, everything happens so fucking fast. Yeah. That when you got to decide whether or not this is it. Now, when it happens so fast. That's hard. But when you now have time to digest it and talk to them, there's no talking. While you're talking, I'm loading the beanbag gun and I'm just hit. I'm hitting you. Yeah. Like, why not? Yeah. While I'm talking to you, we're yelling at each other and shit. Fuck you guys. Cool. <laughs> why aren't you lighting him up with your beanbag gun right now? Yeah. It's one dude. <clears throat> right. Light him the fuck up. Yeah. Let, Let him sue up. the department. Because at the end of the day, the footage is going to show that we didn't fucking kill you. You had a gun and we're asking to be shot and we did not kill you. We stopped the scenario. We ended the threat and we didn't have to kill you to do it. You're welcome. Yep. Heroes. Not necessarily heroes, well, but at the end of the day, day superheroes would know probably many, justice. You know how far that would go if the idea was that we're going to, we hope that you live to sue us versus the concept now is when a cop draws his gun, and I'm not speaking for department policy or anything. This is just my own personal experience. The goal was we're not shooting you to wound you. Sit the goal was we're two to the chest, one to the head. The yeah. goal was to kill you. Always. Because that was that the perceived threat required that level of, a, of attention yeah. was lethal versus lethal. But now the stories, the context, the narrative has all started to twist and it's changed and it's got convoluted to where it's not always necessarily lethal, isn't always required, but it's a split second. Well, also need. by constitutional rights, we have the right to judge and jury. That, yeah, so, not and, that too. So that, and so now we have a government entity talking about t- tyranny, you know, if, you know, not against cops, but yeah. when our founding fathers said tyranny, this is who they're talking about, the police department, and that's, coming with guns and taking our rights. So we have the right to judge and jury, you know, and not to be killed at that solution. So that's when it really comes down to, but it's, it's this whole thing because it said it's last second. So we have, we have to figure out something. But not, and that's the hard part. Is how, you got to go all the way back to the... Welcome to the police academy day reset. one. Yeah, like reset. Need the, the training needs to be changed. The concept of what a cop is and does needs to be changed. And the hard part is the streets have gotten so bad, though, that you still do need those Brad Alcorns. You still need those, and some people will disagree with you, you need those Dyers. You need those Ed Winchesters. Like, you need some of those kind of, you know, police leaders because the, the enemy on the street was so fucking yeah. evil that you need a level of evil to combat it, but it's hard to have a level of evil, but also be a compassionate, community-driven police force that is there for the community. And we've gotten past that point to where the community no longer feels that they're there for them. Yeah, The I community feel- now feels the opposite, and it's like, if somebody were to ask me one day, well, why would you want to be? Well, because if you want to see change, you have to be change. <clears throat> You know, and it's like I tell these people all the time, it's like you don't like the way the cops are. Why not go and try and start to be one of the officers that is trying to do it differently? Like, why not? They will invite you. Trust me. Cops right now will invite you to do not because they want to say, oh, come do my job. It's no, please. Please. We need more good people to be good cops. Yeah, they, they've had to they they get rid of a lot and they want to hire another 120. But in, yeah. I like Jerry Dyer as, as mayor, but as police chief. The crime significantly rose, and ever so there wasn't as there wasn't anything in his time that he fixed any problems. Maybe it was going to go, jump up twice as much, and he maybe and he that's cut, the thing too. Is cut did, it down. Did his efforts minimize? But the, nationally the increase. and California wise, um, 
our crime was the worst. Uh, we had the most lawsuits amongst, you know, we were when, most when, violent. When, when, when was drunkest this? Drunkest city in the last 15 years. Drunk, we're in oh, the yeah, drunkest city. Because sure. we had so many DUIs oh, yeah. and all totally. this stuff. There's a lot of things that all go into it. You mean, I don't, but I don't know the solution. I so would I say, can't say I even know it's probably, right, but I know? would say take that. Take that comparison and spread the comparison across the whole country at that same time. What was the crime like on the rest of the country? Were Dude, we the only ones? Dropping. Actually, gun violence was dropping across the nation, except for Fresno was one of the things that kept on going up. Fresno's fucking Yeah, Fresno. we're fucking Dude, wild. We're, we're our own entity. Well, the reason yeah. why is, and it has, I think it has less Fresno's to do with Fresno's unique. Maybe, yeah, well, because we're it's the wages. <laughs> we're the poorest city in the richest state in in America. So mm. when you have low wages, you're gonna have high crime. Mm. And so the difference is always saying is the rich and the poor. And mm. the bigger that gap gets, that's when you start getting violent. Because no one's gonna sit well, poor yeah. and just watch these people fucking so happy no, they so will much. Eat, they will when, eat the rich. Well, it will people, happen. Yeah. Even poor people work hard sometimes. <clears throat> You know, yeah. that doesn't mean not, not, most of the time poor people work hard labor. Yeah. You know what I mean? So when you work your ass off and then you see that guy who doesn't look like he does much, you don't know. Yeah, you're being rich hate, doesn't necessarily mean you have better work ethic than anyone. It just means that you were, and that's the division of this country: yeah, right were. place, right time, and you had a good work ethic. Now, granted, there's lots of people that have just been fucking hands, haven't have not. Mm. There are people that got where they are because they worked hard, and the right opportunity came along. Right, maybe they got lucky. Maybe they just created that opportunity by working hard. Right, yeah. and then that opportunity manifested itself, and then they pushed through. Totally. Whereas somebody works really hard, and just maybe the industry they're in or something doesn't present those same amount of of opportunities right. no matter how hard you fucking work and i've been in some of those environments where no matter how hard you work no matter f- what the fuck you do you will not see another penny yes your, your boss will yeah that's right the, the, the manufacturer of the product you're selling will but you will not ever. right and that's where people get a lot of this why do i want to keep working my ass so if it came up in fight club why do i want to dial in a couple more lines of code and i'm not going to see anything more Right, but it doesn't do me any good. But it's expected of me. But I see no one. I think that's a lot right. why people aren't going back to work right now. A lot of people are like, you know what? I'm going to do something different with my life. I'm bigger than this typing yeah. code. I'm bigger I, than this. They don't need do the money at that particular moment. So now they're reala- there's but, realization of wait, I don't need the money. What do I want to? Do? Yeah, I, I, I need yeah. to be happy. Yeah. Yeah, and I want, that's you know, what America's about being happy instead yeah. of you know being forced. Yeah, yeah. When we get to these jobs, we're so dependent on money. Can't buy job, happiness. We're not in liberty. We're actually controlled now, by this company. I disagree with you on that. I think money can buy happiness. Well, actually, yeah. Everybody just money keep... can buy what makes you happy. If it's traveling, that takes money. You're right. If You're life right. Experiences, okay. I'll take that, that back. That takes money. I've had a lot of fun going around the now, world. Now, money buying you things won't make you happy. Yeah. But money buying you experiences, money buying you memories. That makes sense because I get, you know, I love traveling the world and I had to pay a couple dollars to get exactly. there. So. Happiness ain't cheap. It ain't yeah. free. Right. Now, right. you can be happy doing life nothing. Life isn't free. Yeah, life isn't free. Happiness does cost something, be it effort. You want to build a Zen garden because that Zen garden makes you happy? Well, you got to build that garden. That costs time. That costs energy. That costs that time. It's costs time. It costs time. time. Yes. Everything costs something. It's just a matter on what you perceive and place value on right. and how important that is to you. Right. Money could be nothing to some people because right. they have tons of it. Or they, they make enough that they're like, I can splurge. Right. I don't care. But every month I make sure I go down to Cabo San Lucas because there's this little beach down there. Or I go and hike up into Huntington Lake because there's this little waterfall up there. Take some money. That makes me happy. You know what I mean? You're like right. it, You're right. Everything costs money. You can buy happiness because you can buy experiences. You can buy things that you that, – that those make you happy. Now, it shouldn't be things. I don't think things should make you happy. No. But they can buy it, you the access to the things that you can do that make you happy. Art. I love painting. I need canvas. I need right. paints. I need brushes. I need easels. I need time. I need lighting. I need all this stuff. Nothing's you know? for free. Yeah. Right. Podcasting is my passion. Yeah, I love podcasting. It's I so I need fun. mics. I need yeah. an engineer. I need a producer. I need... Everything costs money. It's but fun. I do get the adage of you can't buy happiness because you could be truly happy just being fucking homeless and broke and just being happy, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got to be happy within. Yeah, exactly. I use before, a comparison like that. Before yeah. anything, you got to be happy exactly. within. And you got to love yourself before you can love somebody else because nobody's going to love you. Oh, yeah. You. yeah. If you when, don't when like what you see getting, in the mirror. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, you got to mm-hmm. love yourself. You got to be like. Yeah, when girls talk about getting breast implants, I always tell them, hey, look. If you're not good on the inside, it doesn't matter what you put on the outside. Yeah. You're still going to feel that way. So make True. sure you're cool on the inside and then go get those boobs. Yeah. You know? But if and you put with boobs some, on it's a self image, though, too. They're like, I know inside of me, if I had bigger boobs, I would feel better about myself. And I can't 
explain to anyone how to understand the logic, but I understand the logic. Yeah, I like, can understand it, but the, I can understand it. But there's still like a lot, of, a lot of times those people still need. Yeah, there's, there's still there's a hole there. A lot of them yeah. that actually get that and they still feel the same when they I, thought this would I fix it. Now I need a list, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I got and, this medical debt too. And it it's a, it's a, it, money didn't help that person. Exactly, it wasn't gonna make that person exactly. happy. They needed to fix themselves. Could have yeah. used that and spent a month living on the beach. Yeah, that same amount of money and been like, dude, I'm going to move to the beach. Yep. You know, I got my girl wants to go to the beach. You know, like, dude, yeah. you want to move to the beach? I don't want to move. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, but my my kids live here. Yeah, I, I just my my mom lives here. All my family's here. I don't have a big family, but the, like the family I do have is here. Right. And it's like you know, I've been out of my comfort zone. It's not like I've never lived anywhere else. I've I've gone to other countries. I've gone into places. I've seen it. It's like this is just home. It's just home. You right, know, and right. but it's one of those places where it's like Fresno wants to get you. It's got you. It's like Bangkok. Yeah, I'm here. It man. owns you now. It's like I've been. Um, yeah, we've been everywhere, but man. But it's it's. I'm, I feel well traveled. Right. Would I love to travel some more? Obviously, who doesn't? I want to go to fuck doesn't like Japan to travel. Japan again. Japan. See? Japan is my favorite place, though. Dude, I always it's say. clean. It's Dude, nice. The I air's clean. It. You can raw dog the air. It's awesome, it's bro. It's beautiful. Just out there raw dogging the That's air. That's what I'm saying, bro. Yeah, it's Shibuya no Square mess. hanging out on With the food. bullet train, dipping. Oh, dude, eat. the transportation methods alone, you know, and the fact that you can leave your keys in your car. I saw people with their bikes just keys in them, and I was like, "Dude, what's up with that?" And he was like, "Yeah, nothing's gonna happen." I've been there five times in two years. Oh, dude, is that insane? That's a lot. I love it. I got have you that. have you gotten used to the flight? It's like yes. a sixteen hour flight. Um. Well, yeah. It's uh. What is it? Um. From actually, it's like a ten hour. Well, one way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah one way's more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends. Headwinds or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. According to but the it's winds, a, it's a it's, it's a, a trek. It's a it's amazing. It's a fucking trek. Yeah, dude. it's a long one. You're like, man. I watched so- a couple movies and slapped and still wasn't there. I I dude, I love Japan though. It's like you know the it's the energy's perfect. Now, okay, so you've been there multiple times. So you've experienced that. So I can only. I, I got friends there with gyms. When everything. I went, it seemed that the higher up the economical food chain there were, mm-hmm. the less they liked being around. Uh, foreigners like especially since I was American yeah. and I asked our translate guy that was our group from dream right. he was our group guy. I said hey because right. we got on an elevator mm-hmm. and there was two business dudes were on and before the door shut they like made their way off the elevator and it was right. still going up and I was like even pop noticed it and he was like fuck was that about and he goes well you are clearly foreigners you're clearly american foreigners and the more economic status they have here they don't want to mingle with you because they feel that like american tourists were like below them or something is how they were doing but the dude at walmart yeah that motherfucker was down to help me with the language barrier find me some running shoes i was like dude i need shoes i need to go running he was like took me fucking right over dude and i was like yes thank you perfect they're they're such good people yeah so it's like they're they're nice same thing here very cultural differences. Yeah, cultural differences. They're Money. very organized. You know, they have the arrows in the train stations oh, yeah. when you're walking. No one, like, gets in your way. If you're going slow, there's, like, a slow lane. Yeah, there's dude. You go, lane. it just scoops I'm off like, and you go around. I'm like, I wish it was like that in the malls in Fresno. Oh, Fuck. You anywhere. Yeah, exactly. So. If you, okay, so here's the thing. If you took 100 drivers on the road today in Fresno, let's just keep it real small. Took a hundred drivers off the road. I'd be willing to bet that over 50% of them don't have a driver's license. Not right. just a suspended one. Just don't have one. Yeah, of course. Some of the fucking crazy shit I see on the road, dude. I'm like, dude, there should be a driving test every year, <laughs> every fucking year. Yeah. Once a year, you should be able to prove that you should be allowed to drive a car. <laughs> and I get, dude, I've met people on poker tables. who are like, I don't think you should have a driver's license. Why? What do you mean? That is a fucking killing machine Mm -hmm. that you can get behind of after having a six pack and drive and kill other people. Right. Just because you're fucking, uh, or because you think you don't have to stop at that red light. Right. Like what the fuck? So every year, dude, every year, every year. Why not? Why not? Why not? We, Why not? You should be able to prove you can It's drive. an inconvenience or something, but, but that would narrow down the amount of accidents. I bet you insurance companies would get behind it, but they Why wouldn't not? because they make more money because you, the more accidents you get, the more money they make. So right. there's one reason why not. Right. So there's oh, one. Totally, oh, that's yeah. the fucking main reason. Yeah. It goes back to like with medical malpractice lawsuits. It's all money. The lawyers for the doctors and the insurance companies and the doctors all get together and set the rules and the laws and the caps and all right. that shit. They are the ones that decide all that. Yeah. So when you want to sue a doctor, it's a cap at 250000 for uh, pain and su- or uh, the medical malpractice, right? The right. Negligence or whatever, the most you can get. But then the pain and suffering and shit, lost wages, that's all other stuff you can prove. But they set that cap right. so that when a doctor fucks up, 
you know, now granted, don't get me wrong. I mean, the doctors are supposed to be helping you. That's what they're there for. That's you right. go to them when you're sick. So it's like bitching that they have a cap on that protect, <laughs> to protect themselves. It's like bitching at the cops. Well, it's like, well, who are you going to call 911 when you, mm-hmm. when some dude's breaking your house and you don't have a gun because you don't believe in guns, but you yeah. don't believe in cops. So, but, but good you want to defund luck. the police and now your ass yeah. is getting fucking murdered in your house by a fucking thug with guns. Yeah. yeah. So, it's all bullshit. Yeah. It's again, divide. Every, yep. every single all thing division. in life. I mean, Pepsi it, and Cola. Yeah. They yeah. want you to pick one. Exactly. That's why restaurants, that's why when you go to a restaurant, hi, can I get a Pepsi? Oh, I'm sorry, we only carry Coke. Hey, can I get a cola? Oh, we only carry Pepsi products. What? We need, yeah. Don't come you on. carry soda? Yeah, come on, man. And it's just one, so yeah. you got to make a choice. Yep, that's right. Everything's about choices, man. That's right, brother. So, yeah. But so. I, mean, I know we got segued from the martial arts talk. But oh, yeah, one more thing yeah. before. Uh, oh, so um, you were the PFC champion as well, the Bantamweight yeah. champ. Bantamweight. Yeah, I Bantamweight. Saw I saw that. Yeah. yeah, so... Didn't you? You defended your belt. Too. I defended it once against Jeff Bedard, and then I remember that I was there. And then and yeah, that one was triangle, dude. Yeah, and you know what's funny, dude? Afterwards, dude, his fucking team dipped on him. Yeah. I was fucked, dude. Yeah, we went to the after party later, and yeah. he was there by himself. Yeah, and I was like, hey, bro, where's your team? Hang Come out. grab him. Come bring him over, dude. Let's have some drinks. Let's. It's hard parts over, dude. Let's relax now and yeah, enjoy all right, the hard work we put right, in. Right. Because I mean, if you don't want to drink with me, that's cool. No harm, no foul. I understand. I just fucked right. you up. I don't blame you. Yeah, I wouldn't right. want to drink with me either. But I've had, I had beers with Jens Pulver. I, I hang out with Faber. It's it's a job. I got it's all a fucking job. I compete against guys, and we are good friends. Yeah, all it's, the time. It's it's a we've competition. Earned, we've earned each other's respect. Yeah, that's what it's about. It's, Not it's about hating earning each other. other. Yeah. It's that yeah. uh, just because we fought doesn't mean we're, we. Now, granted, there are some guys where I just like, nah, go fuck yourself. I just don't like yeah. you. I don't yeah. have to either. Some people have egos, and it's like, yeah. fuck, I don't like that. I like people to be fucking cool yeah. afterwards. I'm like, you know, we but let you... it all hang out on the mat, leave it in the ring, yeah. and then afterwards you should be able to be cool. Yeah, you should be able to hug after, yeah. whatever. Kill cool. each other during the match, yeah. and after, before and after, you should be cool. Yeah, that, it's competition. That, it's a job. That's don't, take, my... don't take it serious, because we all die. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly, and that's where my head's at. But yeah, it was uh, PFC, and when I fought Bedard, but yeah, yeah, his whole crew dipped on him. Right. They went back to the hotel, and they right. just, I was like, that's fucked up, bro, so you come drink with us. Yeah. Came, hung out with us for a while, drank with us and stuff. But yeah, I defended from there, and then I think I lost a belt to Mikey on the rematch when Mikey just fucking pushed my shit in, dude. Yeah, dude, I've never been knocked out that bad. I fucking you beat him before though, right? I beat him before, and then he was the first one I fought when I came back from being paralyzed. It yeah. was the first like, yeah, let's see, mm-hmm. let's see. You know yeah, what I mean? You can you do this happen. anymore or not? Yeah, yes, you and, can. And uh, everyone was telling me they were like, dude, this kid's gonna fucking wreck you and shit. And I was like, yeah, that's the Bedard fight. That one was over relatively quick. And, uh, but dude, yeah, they were just like, yo, this kid's going to fucking wreck you. And I ended up yeah. beating I, him. I saw this. Yeah. But dude, man, when he, and this is what I tell everybody, everybody always does this. It's everyone's like, how do you set it up so easy? How do you set it up so easy? It's really not that it's, hard. Yeah. Dudes be reaching back to punch you and they're just not thinking about it. And, and they're, th- they're thinking the punch. Open. Yeah. What? Well, it happens. It, I, I think I kind of wedged it in there because yeah. I was all catty cornered against the cage and stuff. I know Doug was right there in the corner too. Rhino was in the corner. Yeah. Big Rhino. Yeah. yeah big Rhino, dude. Yeah. And then, dude, I can't. I want to see that dude fight again so bad. He's a killer. Yeah, yeah dude, I want to see that dude fight like bare knuckle. Yeah, yeah, he's that'd he's, be fucking insane. He's that kind of guy that would do that. Yeah, and he, it, would, it would. Why not? He's a banger. Yeah, he's such first a off. Banger. You oh, know, he throws. He throws them dogs. Yeah, and I'm actually surprised that he hasn't been offered one yet. Like we haven't seen because he's always stayed active. Like he's right. not not competing active, but he's always stayed active. He's always yeah. training. He's always coaching. He's always teaching. He's and a I good, just yeah yeah, and it just never made any sense. Good dude. So like, see, I've got the back of his head here, and it's like, well, he's not gonna go up. And then now I just scoop there my hips is. up, and I just it shoot was there him over. already. And so then that's it. Triangle King. Like that's it. I've got like Escovito. twelve. You know what pissed me off the other day? I was on Sure Dog, yeah. and my son pointed out that because we was looking at my wins and losses, because he was curious. There I am in the back. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was there live though. <laughs> I was there live. I saw that. But one, then bro. that was the one that I got yeah. the uh, the B twelve shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before I felt oh, just good. I felt, felt strong. Great. I felt healthy. Yeah, I just healthy. felt good. Energy so, was right. Yeah, the energy was right. Yeah, good. But uh, but that was the either I won the belt there or I defended the belt on that one. I'm not right. sure what's up, but I did take the belt with me at one point. And, right. Uh, but yeah, then Mikey took it. The fucking Mikey rocking my shit, dude. I got knocked out so bad I didn't know I got knocked out. Shit happens. It, dude, it did, dude. I got. Yeah. I watched the video and he hits me like five times after. The yeah. ref didn't realize I was out. Right. I was just leaning against the cage. Cage held me up and I was like, No, I got you. Yeah, you're just a warrior, bro. That's it's, all you are. You're a warrior. It's the thing that, like, I'm telling you, dude, if you just, it's a good fear. It's a good. It is. You know, you learn a lot about yourself when you get punched in the face, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't hurt. 
Yeah. It hurts. Yeah. Fucking don't get me wrong. But yeah. it doesn't hurt as bad as you think it's going to. Right. It's not as deli- debilitating as you think it's going to be. It's yeah. just you learn you learn a lot about yourself. It makes you a better person. You're like, fuck, man. You, yeah. You can, yeah. Yeah. I love it. You learn what you're capable of, you yeah. know, competition wise, builds confidence. I got one amateur fight. You know, I used to box yeah. black guys and stuff like that. I had fun. Now I'm you're wanting just, to. Now I'm, you're just folding people in their clothes. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to fold people in their clothes and I get folded sometimes. I'm okay with that. I'm humble about it. Just who's fun, man. Do you see that uh, Nogi? Uh, tournament coming up that was getting thrown out there is like 155 to 195 i think or something I think, oh yeah yeah I think they, fowler shouted or something yeah yeah um actually mason's gonna be having the uh underground show at halo okay. on the 20th okay so that's is, gonna be fun you should come out there and check it yeah? out see some good fights come hang out this man. month or next month when this month okay yeah i'll be there i'll be there we'll hang out chill. okay I'll watch the subs and people fight and nice be i fun. like that yeah, yeah no yeah, dude yeah. i dude hey i love watching those things it's fun dude yeah definitely but, you know, hey, hey, Cole, I want to thank you for bringing your intelligence oh, to the show. Man. I don't know about intelligence. It's yeah, a different yeah, yeah. brand of view. That's for fucking sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very different brand yeah, of view. Yeah, you are definitely a legend in Central California, man. Thank and you. I've been wanting to get you on this show. And uh, is there anybody you want to shout out before we uh, fly this coop? Um, there's not really any sponsors. I mean, just everyone that's been ever supporting me and continues to support me. I still get people today that hit me up and ask if they could send me stuff. And it's, it's fucking humbling. You know, yeah. I've been out of the game since, fuck, like what, 2011? Yeah. I mean, I've been come. out for over a decade, man. You need to at least come back and do some jits, that's, brother. That, that, I'll that, support that, you, that, bro. See, that is, I'm okay with that concept. I would love to see that, man. That it, would be amazing. Nothing but fun and good reasons to stay in shape, exactly, man. Exactly, That's man. really all it is. Like, you get to come and stay in shape and have fun, get a little competitive juices flowing with the other guys because nobody wants to just give you a tap. Yeah. They're not just going to give it to it's you. It's going to be fun. Yeah. But it's fun. It's competitive fun. You yeah. build, you grow. It's a brotherhood. No, yeah. I feel like, man, it's something that I've, I, the fear before was just that if you want to get you in, then yeah. it's just like, oh, hey, Cole, why don't you, why don't you come do this? And I was just like, no. Yeah, so everybody look out because a triangle king might be <laughs> back. All right? So that's going to c- conclude our show today, Modern Day Warrior. Cole Escovito, everybody, and look him up. He's the man. And we're out of here. Peace. Peace. Thanks, brother. Appreciate that. For sure, brother. Yeah, it was so fun. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah, you're awesome. If you're fighting against the toughest, you're going to become the toughest. If you're fighting in that environment, the toughest environment, you're going to become that environment. So let's just get used to the toughest environment and let's go for it. Let's just make it happen. I'm the head professor here. Modern day.